we are playing killer frequency it's very apparently it's 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 gas we're gonna see what it's about apparently there's like a killer on the loose and i'm like a radio a radio host on a channel on the radio you feel me and somebody calls me for help i don't know why they call me like what the hell am i gonna do i'm a radio host i speak on the radio what am i gonna do for you let's see apparently this game is very good Hi, youtube elastic ray dude editor leave that out <laughs> i'm joking leave it in <laughs> <laughs> Unless you say got you. <laughs> Every time I want to do an intro, now, give the subs now. Do it now, now, now. I appreciate the love, thank you. Dude, I love the atmosphere of this game. Chills. Yo, anybody else throbbing right now? Wait, you could move in this game? I thought you just sit at a desk. Dumpster diving? It's pretty much like thrifting. Okay. Object interaction. You could hold two objects swap between with hands. Oh, F to drop, R to throw. Right click hold to place object. Release when the when in valid location. Oh, okay, I see. So we do this. Oh, it has to be in your dominant hand. I'm a good Samaritan. Homeboy's hung. Yo, what the? F it sounds like a whole f waterfall. What are we doing here? Why are we here? Okay. Well, what are we doing? Inspecting objects. Press E to begin inspecting. Fam. Shout out to the fam. Control to crouch. Oh, this game's a lot more in depth than I thought it'd be. Man. Oh. The. Uh. Hello. Yo. Yeah, because I could just read that. Anyways, I don't really do good with notes all in the membrane. Ah! Ah! He's behind me, isn't he? No, he's in front of me! I'm a black belt! Oh, shit! Damn, nice... It. What is that, Louie? Oh, no, hell no. What the f? Whoa. Oh. You hear Yo, lock it in, lock it in. Huh? Hear what? I thought I heard someone yelling, or I don't know, how? Forrest, is this a joke? No, I, <laughs> I almost swore I heard something. Oh. And here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. Right. Yeah. You know, four legs, whiskers, tails. They're talking about dogs. my scream, and they have to make it I related to a furry. Is. But I mean, does Gallows Creek have a stray cat problem or something? <laughs> Not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? Right away. Seriously. Does I, Carly? We have to do these checks every time. And do you have to call them that? Reggie pays us to check the equipment before each show. Shout out to Reggie. Reggie pays us to call it a pre-flight check. Shout but out to Reggie. But if you're sure you don't want to. Yes, brother. Look at what we're dealing with here. We need, we need to do the checks. All right, fine. Let's get through this. What do I feel like Peggy's going to be Alrighty, this is your Peggy about speaking. everything? <laughs> really? Come on. Let's have a bit of fun with it for once. Okay. Buckle in, folks. We're about to hit some tubular rents. Let's start with record playing. <sighs> okay. Grab a record, stick it on the player, and hit play. It's easy. Super easy. My nephew could do that. Grab a Rick. Rick. Super easy. Uh, Forrest, you need to grab a record and yeah. stick it on the turn. Table. I heard you. Let me. Ah. Got it. Oh, Great. oh, hell yeah. Now turn it off. Will do. Roger, roger. Now put it back All in. All right. Up next, phone line buttons. Oh, what do I do with your this? Captain will be waiting to take your call on line one. Okay, line one. Line one. Hello. All right, Peggy. Ready for you on line one. Who's Peggy? This is Captain Donald Key calling. Call me Don. You get it? Yeah. It's a riot. Great. And button two works just the same. So, let's move to the Peggy button. I don't like that. You mean the producer line? Like I said. 
The Peggy button. Oh, hell no. Nah. Press it when you need my help. I don't like how she says show. it. Hmm. Is there a Peggy mute button? On God. I haven't invented it yet. Now, come on. The Peggy button is the third one on the phone line. I labeled it for you. Oh, yeah, right there. <sighs> Press. Hold on. Fuck. All these things are so chiquito. I need to, like, man, I'm getting old. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ooh, that's a lot better. Wow. This is Yo. your brain, Forrest. No, no, no. That, that, now that feels wrong. Sorry I made you, you such an unfun turkey. I'm a turkey now, am I? Okay. Are we almost done? <laughs> Sound blaster next. That's an easy one. Um, so... There we go. Epic. Always good for a cheap laugh. All right, we're almost done. Just the volume sliders left. These should let you affect pretty much everything. But let's test it with a record. Play a record and change the volume with the music slider. Heard. Right. Yep. All right. Seems to be all working. We done? Captain? Put your hands in the hair like you just don't there care. What the hell am I saying? We're landing. Local time? I should not encourage there. you. I knew you had a fun side. It's my fun side that gets me in trouble. Now, let's get the show started. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. Huh? I thought that was a joke. Nope, and don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Reggie's the killer. Okay, you're live in Yo! three, Yo! two... 189.16. Oh, hell no. Yo, yo. Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host. What the most? Nash, and you're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Damn. Before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows Creek's only late night phone in talk show, I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening. Guess that scream. This is actually one of the station hooray. manager's better ideas. Here's how it works. I'm going to play you a scream, then you call and guess that scream. What kind of twisted game is this? Guess why they're screaming. Did they stub their toe, saw off a finger, or discover the corpse of a loved one? That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. Right Let away. Scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. I love my job. What do you mean, play the tape? What tape on God? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Hold on, hold on. What's Homegirl's job? To be annoying? Oh, hell no. Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you yesterday. Right. Uh, I know that. Forrest, you do have the tape right. This is the tape right here. I knew we were doing this tonight. Yes. Hey, let's be real. Guess that scream is a terrible idea. On God it is. But I got it. I don't have the tape. It may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. Is it the tape? We're going to need to scream tonight, Forrest. And you're the one at the mic, so... Oh, no. I hate what I've become. I used to go out all across America, and now I'm just screaming into a <clears throat> in a backwater... Ah! Alright, I'm good. Come on, Forrest, just do it. Let's do it. I'm about it, I'm about it. Already. Just think of a scream and let it rip. Okay. Oh, God. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. Had to step away there for a second. Listen close, and then call in to... Guess, Guess that, that scream. scream. Let's do let's do uh, a Yeti scream. Where is Peggy Peggy me scream? Cause that's all she's been doing tonight. Damn. <sighs> yep, homeboy's well, cheeks folks, are definitely getting clapped. There you have it. Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Dough. We're in Texas. Just call in at five. We gotta be at Texas. Three nine K fam with your guest. Now, here's some music while you get dialing. Um, yeah, music. Oh, I'm a fucking G, dude. I'm so good at my job. Whew. Damn. Some responses have a time limit, but it might be better to not respond to some situations. Should I introduce a song? Sure. Time to go on the journey that is Blast Processor with their hit song, 1980X. Wait, I already found? Oh, God, Forrest, that was amazing. 
amazing. R right, right. You're saying I failed my job? I'm getting fucking glazed. She's hype. Boy, chat, shut the. Watch, man. You're watching a prodigy in the making. Thanks. I can't wait to hear what people think that was. <laughs> How the hell did I get into this mess? <laughs> Lighten up, Forrest. That's going to be the highlight of my week. Oh, Forrest, there's a call coming. Oh. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. Caller, you're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on with you tonight? Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Okay. Slow night? Why are you calling me? Well, Leslie, I guess it must be a slow night for crime if you've got time to call in. Wait, I didn't pay my taxes. What can we do for you? Slow Play night? cool. Forest, I yeah, cause I know that you found a fucking body. Body, I need help. Okay, how am I supposed to help? I recognize her voice. I'm pretty sure that actually is our 911 operator. I think this is real. All right, Peggy, you say Peggy, something. I'm not gonna be happy if this is a prank. That's what I'm saying. What if it's a prank? Prank segments on my shows. It's in my contract. Forest, I really don't think this is a prank. Um, you should call the sheriff. Like, hello. Like, what are we doing? Leslie, if you're telling the truth. You should report this to the sheriff. What was his name? Sheriff Andrews? Garfield. Whatever. I'm at the sheriff's office right now. Wait, what? Sheriff Matthews is dead. We're cooked. What? Sheriff Matthews is dead? I couldn't get any response from the department. So you call us. That's never happened before, so I came to the station and... I found him. Oh, God. Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close, and I really don't want to say. She's a killer. Him. Did he fight back? I don't know. Very descriptive. I think he tried. Details he matter. Oh, this is perfect. I don't think. Uh, sorry, sorry to kill the fucking vibe. I've been watching Reacher. And I'm pretty much a detective. The way she described that sounded like she enjoyed that he died. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but. Um, is there anyone else at the station? Well, is, is anyone else at the station? And anyone who can help you, or? Or who might be responsible. No. I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here. GG. But she's knocked Hang out, up. tied up, and locked in a holding cell. I called you right after I found her. Why call me? Uh, wait. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. Don't be ridiculous. We have three. But Officer Gunderson is on leave in Cancun. Leslie, yeah, because that does a do lot. Have any idea who could have done Fucking it? Cancun. Brother, is that Dak Prescott? Not a clue. I didn't see anything on my way over. Leslie, you need to call over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. They need to send someone over from their department. I tried, but I can't call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. I'll have to go there myself. Five months up Let them to know what's going on guys. and bring help Let's back with so me. But drawing. if you leave while they're- Okay, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off uh, for emergency. We're gonna mute the alerts. The murderer on the loose. Who's gonna man the emergency line? That's why I called. Forrest, I've routed all 911 calls to come in to you. It's an, it's an honor, truly. It really is. I'm glad you thought of me and nobody else. You can count on me. Uh, I'll do what I can. Thank you, Forrest. You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. It's my first day on the job. You're the only person equipped for the job. It's my first day. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the two. It's like an interview. You ask questions to get information you can use. Okay. Keep people talking. You okay. Know, guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews. They sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I've heard. <laughs> but that doesn't matter. And besides, there are two of you. You can talk to each other, discuss ideas, work together. Hell, let's have some on-the-job training right now. I have an emergency. Okay. I need to get an unconscious Deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. All right. It looks like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. Okay. Is there any way you can reach the keys? On God. No, there aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. Oh, yikes. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. Okay, then get There's like a stick. Be another way in. You can't bring down the door. Find another way. Find another set of keys. There always there, there always has to be a spare, no? There's got to be another set of keys somewhere in that office. 
Those can't be the only one. On God. Of course. Yes, there must be another set. Where might another set be? Obviously, Sheriff Matthews. But what if Sheriff Matthews is the one that he got the key from? It doesn't hurt to check, though. Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he, you know. I couldn't see any at a glance, but get in I there. Really look up close. There you go. One second. Yeah, get up. Fill him up. It's okay, man. Sorry, Sheriff. Leslie, stay with me. Stay with me. I'm just gonna turn you over and. Don't stare at me. Oh, wait. That might be them. I, I, th I think I got the cell keys. Looks like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. Do the keys work? They do. Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so... I'm pretty much Jack Reacher. So good, I suppose. How are you feeling, Forrest? Uh, I'm quitting KFM if this is a prank. Let's take it seriously. If I'll take Peggy's word. Peggy sounds like she knows what she. Peggy 18 sounds like she knows what she's talking about. Yeah, that seemed to go okay. Maybe Leslie was right. Maybe. Yo. We can handle this 911 business. That's the spirit, Forrest. I think you're right. Though I have right. to say, I. Well, I really hope this is the only call like this we get. Same. Real. Come on, Martinez. There we go. So we're, we're just letting everybody hear this conversation we're having, huh? Just gonna sit you in your office chair. I'll head to my car in a minute. I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. Okay. I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. Okay. If the killer came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. Right. You're leaving? We're on our own? It's the right thing to do? Well, yeah, what do you, she needs to get the other person to safety, so yeah. That's a good idea. We don't want to take any risk right now. Thank you, Forrest. You and Peggy just worked together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I... What? My car! My car is on fire! What do you mean it's on fire? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Wait. What? Yo! No, no way. This can't. Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? How is she so cool, calm, collected? Sounds like whistling? Whistling? It can't be. Oh my god. I can see him, but he's dead, right? Right? Oh no. But that mask. Shh, shh, How the shh. hell is he? Who, Leslie? Who? The whistling man. The whistling <laughs> man? Who's the whistling man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Wore that mask. Yikes! But he's dead. He's... What the hell? It's Josh oh Hutchinson! No! Do you, think, do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way. Oh, he's coming, right? Lock the doors. Leslie, stay inside and lock the doors. Right. Shit, we need a new plan. My car is... You're in a police station. Grab a gun. Take a police cruiser. There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office. You're sitting right? there. You should take one of those. I... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Yo. Like, how can she be so unprofessional? Dog. I mean, she. Listen, there's a killer. She's probably not thinking. Whatever. Let me check if Martinez has any. Uh, I'll just reach into your pocket there, deputy, and. Yes. Oh, she's the 9 one operator. Oh, okay. I saw that parked out front when I got here. Nice one, Forrest. Good thinking. But wait. How am I supposed to get Oh, to the yeah, car? the other body. The whistling man is right there. Uh, we should take Does Deputy Martinez have a gun? The sheriff definitely has a gun, and sheriffs always they're always packing some heat. So, the sheriff. The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. Okay. I. Oh, shit. It's empty. No, mom. He must have emptied it trying to defend himself. She has keys. She has sheriff's keys. So there should be a weapon. You know what I'm saying? There must be a weapon lock up in the station, right? Could you grab something from there? I saw it earlier, but as you might have guessed, it was locked. You have the sheriff's keys! But maybe one of these keys I got earlier will help. Let me see. No. No! No, uh, shit! None of the keys work. Are, 
are there any other weapons lying Fuck. around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um, uh, let me check Deputy Martinez's belt. All right. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, pepper spray, and taser. I can only hold one if I'm carrying Deputy Martinez. Baton, pepper spray, and taser. I don't think the baton. Dude has a blicky. Pepper spray, he's wearing a mask. I think taser, dude. I think taser, easily. What should I take? Yeah, taser. Take the fucking taser. I mean, it's gotta be the taser, right? Got it. I'm just going to Got to be. It's just, it's just gotta be. It gotta be the taser. Wait. Do you hear that? Is he edging? No. I, I can't hear anything. Exactly. It's gone quiet. No more knocking. Be careful. Be careful. I don't like it. Me neither. But it's an opening, and I've got to take it. Okay. Deputy Martinez, if you can hear me, it's time to move. How about we just, like, just... Deputy Martinez... And that clap his cheeks. I'm telling... Slap the homeboy's face. Uppy, uppy. Wakey, wakey. It's time to leave, dude. Like, what are we doing? Lean on me. Yep. There you go. Are you sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? So... What a badass, yo. Here we go. Again, you're hooked into dispatch now, so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. Okay. If I reach it. Uh, speak to you soon. Let's be motivational. Good luck, Leslie. That's one brave woman. On God. God, I hope she makes it through this. <sighs> you know, I've got to say, this really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. Let's play some, yeah, let's play some music. Let's, everybody, calm everybody down. Oh, I think we've got Leslie back on the line. Okay. I'm putting the call through. So much for relaxing, so much for downtime. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. Are you there? Over. We hear you loud and clear. Hello, Leslie. So I, I guess you made it to the car then. We did. Deputy Martinez is in the passenger seat, still out cold. I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to wait for him. Hell yeah. So I'm going to get us moving. Jesus. God damn it. Get, get back. Get away from her. What's happening? Leslie, what's happening? The whistling. No. Get off her. Taser. Bitch. Yeah. Taser. Yeah. Get out of there. Leslie, what are you waiting for? Get out of there. Don't worry, Deputy Martinez. We're out of here. Are you two okay? Leslie, are you two okay? Woo! Forrest, that taser, definitely the right call. I know. I've seen my fair share of cops. I've seen my fair share of cops. I know. I know. Oh my god, I can't believe we escaped. Well done, Leslie. You saved a life. Just another day for you. Oh my god, yeah. But let me tell you, I prefer doing it from your side of the phone. <laughs> True. Leslie, how long do you think it's going to take to get help? Gallows Creek as a nowheresville, but it's pretty damn close. It's going to take a while, maybe two, three hours each way. That's, as long as you're on the move. That's better. Down. We'll do our best. We'll do our best to keep everyone safe until then. Thank you. Just do what you did just now, and Gallows Creek is going to be okay. Righty ho. Anyway, once I'm in, oh, I think Deputy Martinez is starting to stir. Forrest, Peggy, I've got to go. I'll be out of range soon. Heard. I'll radio back as soon as I can once I got the cavalry. Try not to crash. Try not to crash. We need you back in one piece. Good luck, Leslie. Feel better soon, Deputy Martinez. Come on, come on. Like, is that not like, uh... Folks, you heard it here. We've got a killer on the streets of Gallows Creek tonight. Please make sure to stay safe. And Leslie, we're counting on you. We're gonna get back to the show, meanwhile. If you have anything on your mind or have any information about this Whistling Man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here on 189.16, The Scream. For now, here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. This is not what I signed up for, Peggy. But damn, are we doing a good job? But damn, are we doing a good brother? This is actually insane. Did she really say it's gonna take her four hours? This guy's gonna kill half the town in four hours. Forrest, that's not helpful. 
I know, I know, I just... <sighs> Who is this Whistling Man character anyway? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Edward Marshall Looney. Edward Marshall Looney. in a freaky mask, whistling, and... Killed about a dozen folks in Gallows Creek. And Geegan, clearly. No reason for it. No motive. He just... Uh, okay, yeah, what happened to him? Okay. What happened to him? Well... Police chased him up to Ellis Point one night. We call it Whistling Point now. And it was, well... Where he died? It was on this night, actually. This night? The police cornered him, and he jumped into the river. Bro's been plotting for years? Been. So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the story? Story is, he's biding his time. Waiting to take revenge Has to be town. the Grinch. All right, that's the story. What's the truth? Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight... I don't know. Guess we'll find out. You know why, dude? I guess we'll find out what we're dealing with, whether we like it or not. I guess so. <sighs> at least we got the word out, I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday after midnight? Could be around 35? 35? Isn't 3,500? Huh. I didn't realize Gallows Creek was that large. No, 35 people at best. Oh, wow. 35 at best 35 yeah it's a school night makes sense and what's the population of gallows creek i don't know exactly a little over a thousand bro how is this oh. how, how many did you get before you know before my career exploded and i ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people yeah before that around five for most shows on the low end big gas could pump that up to 10 15 easy 5,000 on the low end? We could only dream of that. Five million. Dog, how, how, how the hell is this business running? We have 35 people. How is that going to keep us afloat? Million? Yeah, sometimes that's just the way it goes. Hell yeah. At least the whistling man hasn't killed me yet. I Too guess. many crickets? Yeah, I guess we're going to learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. All right. Take it when you're ready. Time to turn the music off. Heard. 189.16. And we're live. Hello, caller. You're live on 189.16, The Scream. Is everything, uh, all right? Hot ass breath, boy. Oh my days! Uh, who is this? Are you, uh, hello? Hello? Hey, crank up the AC, dog. Crank up the. It's getting hot in here. Jesus, what? He's edging. Okay. Yo, What's bro. Your, why are you your mic's not muted. Oh. It's a prank caller. It is a prank caller. I've come back from the dead to kill again. Anyways. No one's safe. Ooh, so scary. Do you accept requests? I've got a list of names I'd love to see in the obituaries. Uh, maybe you must make a sacrifice Ooh. to us. A sacrifice to us? How about you sacrifice your cheeks to me? Yeah. We want cheese dusted pretzels. I mean, I want cheese dusted pretzels. Or I'll cut your face off. Goddamn kids. I'm cutting them off. Thank you. Uh, uh. Yeah, cut him off. Uh. For anyone just tuning in, we do in fact have an actual killer out in the streets tonight. Anyway, fucking chumps. This next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. And staying safe with a hot cup of moco, cocoa. Jesus. 
Uh, it's your thing. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. Peggy. The hell was that? Kids pretending to be a killer who right now is stalking the town? It's a thing. A thing? Ugh, oh, kids around here. They pull pranks pretending to be him. By pretending to be this whistling man character? They think it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny at all. And there's no chance that our whistling man was just a prank. That Leslie... No, that... No, there's no way. That's real. That has to be real. <sighs> Christ. Let's stay positive. We still have a show to do. We already have another caller on the line. Hey, right. let's do it. Let's do this. Regalo, regalo. We have she a sold, she sells at the seashore. <laughs> Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. What? I, I dialed 911. Perfect. I need the sheriff right away. Okay, right. Well, I'm filling in for 911 tonight. What's your name and what's your trouble? Uh, my name is Sandra Sharp, and I need the cops. Now. I'm the best you got, man. I'm sorry. Let's not say this. Let's not make her panic. I'm sorry, but the cops aren't coming. Leslie's on her way to Henderson for help. What? Oh, God. Listen, you've got to help me then. Okay, I'll try my best. For jazz run, and now some psycho dressed like the whistling man is after me, knife in hand. Oh, God. It's actually What if it's just a kid doing a prank? Bad night to go out for a run. Where are you now? Are you now? <laughs> Did you escape to somewhere safe? Oh, I did, baby. I jazz ran all the way to my car and nothing flat. But I drove okay. somewhere along the way. I never Don't call me baby. I've got a place to hide, but I can't get moving. Homegirl, homegirl's about to die. I went for a jazz run, baby. Bro, lock it in. It sounds like you lost him. I think you'd be fine. Is there anywhere else you can go? Is there anywhere else you can go? Do you have any friends nearby? Oh, well, I'm not going back out there. I... Yo. I don't. I don't hot wire. I've got a toolkit buried beneath my spare sweatbands. I'll okay. When I find it. Details matter, I guess. Details matter. You're listening to 189.16, The Scream, hosted by me, Forrest Nash, your friendly neighborhood radio host, mechanic, and savior. You sit tight. I do it all, truly. Spins, folks. Jack this of all trades. You, Sandra. Doesn't the station have a show about cars? The Tamora Twins or something? Timberline Twins talk motors. Yeah. You know they're not even brothers. Does that matter? They look the same, though. I know, but they're not even related. It's weird. I asked them about it once, and they got really sweaty and defensive. Anyway, go see what you can find. The offices are out the door and down the hall. Righty ho. All right, so we need to find how to hotwire a car. This game is, dude, this game, this game, this game is badass. I have a K9 on standby. Oh. It's feisty. Wait, free also content? What am I doing? Hey. Be on standby, okay? Oh, this game's badass, though. I like how you can walk around and shit. I thought you were literally just glued to a chair, but no. Um. So many locked doors, so few keys. Is this, okay, this has to be it. Oh, can I put my butt on <laughs> We need to find something about cars, 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 cars. Car Grilling spree. Grilling doesn't matter. Let's take it just in case, though. Scare, craft, and work? The art of decorating with... Yeah. I have tools. I can hold two things, but how does that... Wait, hold on. What was that? What's that? This has to be important. Twins, I've borrowed your car theft magazine. Those wevels, ranchotos, aren't sitting right. Gonna need something to read. Pray for me. Huh? Bathroom. Oh my god. You are a fucking genius. Chat, how the fuck do y'all do it? This looks useful. No, it's like what we need. Okay. Oh, perfect. Just let me just 
Perfect. Use a screwdriver keys if, uh, as a key if that... Yo! Someone, someone's here, dog. Place items in a tray to hold them while on calls. The tray. What tray? Alrighty, we're ready, we're ready. <clears throat> and we're live. In three, two, one. You find anything? Yeah, I found a magazine about oh, we're not live yet. cars. Well, that sounds perfect. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. It's already off, but okay, I'll shut it that way. Caller on line one. Thanks, Peggy. Thank you, Peggy. Be pegging you later. We're back with 189.16, The Scream. How are you holding up, Sandra? <gasps> the creep's looking through the parking lot trying to find me. Listen, I understand we're saving somebody's life, but we gotta plug it in. We gotta let the people know who's saving this person. We gotta make money somehow. My tools, and I'm ready to get this hunk of junk moving. Okay. How do we start this baby? You need a screwdriver. Th this is clockwise, right? What the fuck? Yeah, it's the only issue. Or, or option. Put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist clockwise. Here goes, baby. I... I... Oh. Screwdriver's too fat to fit. Swear. What next? Okay, remove the steering column cover. Unscrew the steering column. All right. Jazz turn. Jazz turn. One, two, it's okay. One, think two. about jazz. Think about jazz. Breathing all your running... You know, stamina building has been for this moment. Long enough. Covers off. Okay. There's a bunch of wires down here, all paired up, and oh god, my heart is pumping. Check the serial number, then strip and twist the following wires together. If there is a four before a three, and no seven, number red and blue. Okay, we need. To, I need. To, I need to hear. I need to hear. Tell me what's okay. Do your jazz breathing. Don't panic. I want to say that, but would. We need information. Tell me exactly what you see. Okay. We can do this. There's a red wire, a blue wire, a yellow wire, a, a green wire, and... Okay, serial wire. numbers! Stay with me! Stay with me, Sandra! Okay, it says, uh, check the serial number then. Okay. What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is 5768943200. 320. If there's a zero at the end and, and a three doesn't come before the six, I need to hear it again. Five, seven, six. If the three doesn't come before the it's it's red and yellow. Strip and twist together the red and yellow wires. All right. We All right. And we, yes, What's the passion? And we twist and we turn. Yeah. Oh, perfect. I also see pink and purple wire. What next? Now strip the purple wire and twist it into the exposed cable. And brush it against the twisted wires? Brush the purple wire against the twisted wires of step three. Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. We strip and we brush and Oh! <gasps> I thought, bro, I thought she was to blow up! Oh, dude, I can't, man. My heart, my heart can't take this game. Righty-ho, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you're safe, but lay off the jazz. No, the jazz kept her alive. Uh, just keep driving. You just keep driving now, okay? And get home safe. Get home safe, Sandra. Will do, baby. All right. You hear a car accident? Lol. We did it, Forrest. Hell yeah. We sure did. Here comes another hit track that we're ja excited to share with you. Hell yeah. If you're also having car troubles, then tune in to Timberline Twins Talk Motors here on 189.16 Monday yep, and Friday. Yep, they better pay us for that plug-in. Take it away, Forrest. For that ad read. Right away. I still can't believe this is happening. <sighs> right? My like Gallows Creek didn't already have enough to worry about? What do you mean? Gallows Creek is a miserable place to live. Damn, like really? that, huh? It's nothing personal. Just, you know, my upbringing to where I am now. Kind of a letdown. It's nothing personal, Peggy, but it's not Chicago. Or, hell, it's not really anywhere. There you go. Well, I like it here. People are polite and, uh... Stab happy? Don't be awful for us. <laughs> Come on, there must be Too soon, my fault. Like about this place. Some folks have been okay. See, that's the one thing about small towns. You get mean mugged for a while, but then once you become part of the family, you're part of the family. I guess some folks have been okay. You're not terrible. After a while. 
What did I say? Not terrible. I know. After a I know. While? High praise coming from Forrest Nash. You know what I mean, Peggy. I do. It's Forrest Nash for. Who do you think I made the game chat? Swell. Anyway, I hope the killer is done for the night. Hopefully. But Leslie gets back soon. Me too. Can we at least call off that stupid guess the scream contest now? Nah, for real. Yeah, that'd probably be a good Does idea. Does it seem appropriate for what's going on? Swear, it's only been 42 minutes? Jesus. Caller on line one. All right, lock it in, lock it in. Evening, caller. This Yo. is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand-in. Hey, Forrest. My name is Brian. Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty of... Cut this shit. He's just trying to plug in his pizzeria. Ponty's Pizza. Hello, Brian Ponty's of Ponty's Pizza. Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. You know what? I'll what shut him out. Why not? to say about what's happening? I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. Right away. I've of course. I've seen a lot over the years down here at Ponty's Pizza. Uh, you Very did a really okay. Great job. And uh, as a thanks for all you did there, I just wanted to tell free pizza you for life. I'm sending you some coupons for free pizza here at Pony's That's what's up, yeah. Pizza. That's what's wow, up, yeah. Brian, Thank you, Brian. Really Truly. You. you really don't have to, though. Oh, it's the least I can do. And if you like it, well, you're in luck. Because we're always running. Dave Portnoy here. will have you eating for pennies. Damn. Great, bro. And let me tell you, the pizza we have is to die for. Oh, Jesus. No, 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 no. Yeah. I think I was no mamas. That was pretty tasteless, I have to say. That was pretty tasteless, I have to say. I'm sorry for it. It's okay, man. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else of coming on down to Ponty's Pizza. We've got a great special this weekend. Our famous beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. Wait a second, beer? Come on down to Ponty's Pizza this weekend. You've just got to pay for one slice to get yourself. God damn it. You're just calling in to advertise your shop. For, for, Peggy, hang up on him. Done. Dog, this guy sucks at his job. He used to be a radio host in front of 5 million people. I figured that shit out frame one. I was on that shit. Oh, real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Now, a word, a word from, from our sponsors. sponsors. Code, you want to check out 10% off G-Subs. Love you, appreciate it. Do I know how to play a cassette? Duh. Sure. I used to have a cassette aux tape. Done. Teddy Gallows Jr. is a family man, a devout Christian, and a proud patriot. Oh. Teddy Gallows Creek. Gallows Creek. Like his father and all his fathers before him, Teddy Gallows Jr. has worked hard to create jobs. Peggy, how much are we getting paid for this? Structure and make Next Gallows time, increase the flat fee, yeah? Mayor. Next time, increase the flat fee. What is this? Unlike current mayor, Linda Cartwright, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor, and he stands with our neighbors. Like Sheriff Matthews, who... After years of keeping the peace, Mayor Cartwright is trying to force into early retirement. Oh, that's... I chose the wrong tape to play right now. Teddy Gallows Jr. doesn't believe in keeping a good man out of a job. Teddy Gallows Jr. believes in the American dream. Does Linda Cartwright help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American town? Help him become mayor. Take a swing. For Gallows Creek, vote for Teddy Gallows Jr. Take a swing. Homeboy swings. It sounds like a knife. My name is Teddy Gallows Jr. And I approve... Sound like a goth? I mean, yeah, I guess. God, what a jackass. On God, take this shit out. Great A asshole. Fucking well, A. Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not... Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, just the one. Good. Thank God. Huh. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek? Uh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. 
Uh, of uh, course, I, he's one of those guys. Yeah, I fucking peaked in high school. You should have been there. I was the best. Come suck my dick. It's a two-incher. Yep, he played lots of sports back in the day, yep. and he never lets anyone forget it. Womp well, right. <laughs> Let's just get back to the show. Well, folks, hearing that reminds me that every vote matters. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. This is so relatable. You know what I'm saying? I'm joking. Every ad I take, I completely love it. You mean take a swing for Teddy Gallows? Yeah, sure. Let's find out from our next caller who's got their vote. Welcome to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. Yeah, Leslie. Ah! We should add that. We should add that. Like, I, as soon as we say, welcome to The Scream, ah! you know what I'm saying? This is Maurice Russell from The Gallows Reporter. I'm at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs. Maurice! Maurice! Forrest Nash? I want to okay. speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? Yikes. Uh, Leslie left me in charge. He sounds like he's familiar with Leslie. Let's say Leslie left me in charge, so he knows I'm cool with Leslie, therefore we're cool. Leslie's driving to Henderson right now. She left me in charge. Why on earth is Leslie? See? Oh, never mind. See? Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. He's on vacation. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Okay, Jesus. What the hell? We, 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 what are we doing? Ted, what happened? Did you witness the incident? No. Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? I can cite you as an anonymous source, if that's a concern. Is this fucking J. Jonah Simpson, Jimison? What's his fucking name from Spider-Man? Jesus Christ. Yo, just, yo, we're live on the air, man. Come on, lock it in. We're live on the air. Anything we say can and will be broadcast. Live on... Damn it. All right. There's obviously a lot more going on than I know. Yeah, no duh. There's a lot happening tonight. You said someone broke in. That's nothing to get worked up about. Yo. Hello! Yo. It, does this thing work? A sheriff is dead. We're getting help from a different fucking town. Oh, someone broke. I wouldn't worry about it. Dog, there's a killer on the. Boy, boy, boy. Hell no. Nah. Yeah. Hey, this town fucking needs me. They Some need me. Idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. Worse That's not year. you get you can't take that lightly, this yo. Punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. And now he's back. Maurice, I don't know what's going on, but he's back. The whistling man is back. Don't be an ass, Nash. Oh wow, we got ourselves a fucking jokester. You know what? Hey, forgive me. Hey, forgive me for trying to fucking save you, you coward! Every year this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. Did you see his- did you see the body? I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews... Where are you now? I'm in the boardroom. Upstairs. I like how the atmosphere just changes. Cameras all the Perfect. You can watch them on any TV set here. Okay, There's you're in a good room. No, let's not make him think he could take the whistling man. Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Uh, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going. Yo. To that crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. Looks like he's trying to look for something. Blocking or it sounds stairs. like. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out. That's right. Wow. What a that building. Take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is Forrest, What can we I do? I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office. Oh, okay, right? okay. In different rooms with different I thought homegirl just had his personal cell. So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. Good idea, good idea, good idea. And by Marie's time and get a, the exclusive interview with the killer. <laughs> yeah, buy him time. Wh who would pick this? Buy Marie's time. That could work. Exactly. It's worth a shot. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. We're applauding, man. We're thinking. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out. Jesus. You realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? 
Oh, oh, I'm about to start biting my drywall, dog. I, this, this guy, he's pissing me off. For that to be successful, you're gonna need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. I know where exactly where to go. All delivered while the killer is en route. I've got it. I have an idea. Thank God I've always been cool under pressure. Don't go. Yo. Yo. Fam. He does not got it. Hey, we'll be right back after this short commercial. What the hell are we doing? You... You don't think the killer got him, do you? You're listening to... If you're a hoe, hit up my phone. Oh. Freak's going to be here any second, too. Go check your fax machine. Don't let me down. Okay. There's still more I need to do before I can leave? Oh, oh. How do you know our fax machine number? That was fast. How do you know our fax machine number? KFAM and the Gallows Reporter have a pretty long history. Cool. I'll go pick up that map then. Where is the fax machine? I think I know where it's at. Tell me where the fax machine is again, Peggy. The fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Okay. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. This okay. game's cool, man. I, I can't go over this go shit. Go to the office on the other end of the hall. Grab the fax from the machine. Easy. Easy peasy. Right? Right here. Oh, there it is. This must be it. That's the stairs. Let's let's take a good minute to study this. So he's in the fax room. So if that's the stairs, if he's blocking the stairs, he has to be in the boardroom. Bro, how do we I mean we could make him go to the editors? Okay, I know what to do. Hey, did you get the fax? Sure did. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Mr. Russell, you uh you still with us? I am. You get my fax? Uh yeah, I have it here. Yeah, I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, folks, we're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling man. This is Here's twisted. The situation. Okay. The whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. And now he's in the office next door. Okay, so an office space. It's now or never. His plan of yours better work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number, and then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? The uh, the editor's room. Call the editor's office. The extension is 03. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? The kitchen. Let's take him to the kitchen. That's closest to the exit. And then we could call the boardroom last second. You're moving to the kitchen. Yeah. That makes sense. Yes. Go somewhere he's already checked. No shit. Not bad, Nash. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? He's dead. Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling. The stairs are blocked off with the cubicles. Or some shit. I don't know. Hold on. Watch. Now. I'm cooking. I can't believe it. He's actually heading to my office. No shit. You can thank me later. Don't worry, Maurice. You can thank me when you're safely home. Thank you. It's your producer I'll be crediting. Really? If no, whatever. Through this, the coast is clear. Now go to the kitchen. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Smart. Smart yeah. man. Smart man. Making my move. I'll call when I get there. What? Just, oh. Do you think he'll make it okay? He's got it. I'm sure, he'll be fine. He has the attitude for him. What do we do? Oh, no, wait. We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. What do you mean? Yeah. I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. We gotta think of something else. Yeah. Maybe we could. Oh, calling coming. Say your idea. Maybe we can what, man? How the hell am I gonna tell this guy to move cabinets? The cabinets are blocking the stairs. A phone call is not gonna make enough time to distract. Oh, lock locking. Ready? Ah, oh, ready as I'll ever be. Ready as I'll ever be. I put him through. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw me. Oh my god. Man, motherfucker, I thought you were cooked. I gotta give you credit for that. But I'm not out of the woods yet. Okay, okay. Uh, right, let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Correct. Exactly. I can move the furniture out of the way, not quickly. 
I got it. I got it. I got it. We make a phone call for the archives. He pushes the furniture in front of the door to block the door. But the door opens that way. Can you lock him in a room? Yeah, yeah. Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. But the damn fire regulation say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. Must unlock from the inside. Get out just as soon as... Wait. Wait, wait. No. No, no, no. I got it. Okay, okay, okay. The secret archive through my office. Where we keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, a secret archive? Reggie would love that. Who cares about Reggie now? Up back there. Juicy secrets about outer space? Make light of the situation. Yeah. I didn't know you were into conspiracies, Peggy. I may have borrowed a few tapes Listen, from our manager's office. I always got time to riz. He has quite the collection. Will you two chatterboxes pipe down? I've got it all figured out. Okay, okay, okay. Secret archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only the outside. How do we get him in there, though? can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in... We can catch the son of a gun. Hell! Exactly! Family friendly, Peg! Yes, what the fuck I'm talking about, man? Oh my god. Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. Let's get it. So should I call the secret archive then? Not yet. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. Real. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Let me think. There is a door in the editor's office. Is there a TV in there? Use your stuff as bait? Use a radio? TV or radio would work. I think radio. Maybe we could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archive. Okay, then what is Are in there? there? No radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but what is it? Our sports reporter Hopkins. He has a little portable radio. He never turns off when he's here. Is it still in the office? I hope he's right on. That might be what we need then. Is his portable mm. radio still there? It should be. It's what he calls his work radio. Should be in the archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted. Alright, perfect. Search. Nice. I'll call you back once I've got the radio. Okay, what so he's save him, Forrest. Peggy, hey, pipe it down works, a bit. We might even save the whole town. Let's make it happen. We're close. Let's make it happen, Peggy. How can we fail? I mean It's a lot of ways, man. A lot of ways. Plan with steps. Yeah. Get the radio, plan it in the secret archives, lure the killer, and oh, call incoming from the reporter. Putting it through now. Nash, hello. I'm here. Nash, I'm here. I'm here. Yo, hello. I'm here. Is everything okay? I found the radio. It's okay, right perfect. Where I thought it would be. It's all coming together. I'm just gonna turn it on quickly. Make sure it's still got some juice. Turn the volume. Please turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, 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 I yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I just, you know, you just back, back up plan, you know, just gotta make sure you know what you're doing. The radio works! If I make it out alive, Hopkins might just get that day off he wanted. Eh, he's earned it. Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. For ho who's, who, who's Hopkins? For Hopkins! For Hopkins! Wait! Ah, oh, goddammit! What? If I can't have this stupid thing turned up, how am I supposed to draw the killer? Oh. I can't be in the room when it's on, or I'm dead. You just... Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, Peggy. Yeah, Peggy. What happened? We can do it. We can do it, man. But wait. We're the radio. We can just be oh. quiet until you're ready. Oh, Peggy. Oh, Peggy. We can fucking do this, Peggy. Peggy, we can... Oh, my God. If you can do that, then... Yo. Yeah. Sure. 189.16. I know that's your station. Perfect. But a good editor always double checks. Can you confirm that? Uh, 189.16, the best and only. 189.16, The Scream. Gallows Creek's best yeah. and only phone in talk show with me, Forrest Nash. Ah! Peggy. Anyways. Jesus Christ. I've got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Okay, perfect. Now, I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? 
Let me think. This is where I really need to think. I don't want to say the boardroom. I want to say it, but at the same time, the killer's not a dumbass. He's going to go to the boardroom. He's going to realize he's in the security room. He's going to turn on all the, the cameras and find out where he's at. Maybe the archives? He's already checked the archives. He's already, he's already checked the kitchen. Wait, the killer's in the archives? He's not in the archives. He's in the editor's room. Oh, the guy's in the archives. That's right. That's where he went to get the fucking... Oh my god, bro. I wish he's killed this guy. Kitchen's small. And maybe it is the boardroom, dude. I just really hope, man. <clears throat> Call the boardroom. The extension is 04. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office. But he hasn't but searched we it. haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? I'm sure. Let's make the call. I'm sure. Make the call. Okay. Calling the boardroom now. I know he took the TVs, but what if the killer's like, wait a minute, this looks like a security room. Let's turn this shit on. He's on the move. I'll call you guys from my office in a second. Okay. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. Seems like it. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? It's on person named Mr. Russell, right? I mean, that just seems like... You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do my best impersonation of Maurice. I think that'll draw the killer in. What's your Mr. Russell impression? <clears throat> I think I gave that mask freak to slip. What a great plan this is, Pearl. Hey, uh, he the I'll give you an A for effort. That was per Ooh, Pe call Peggy. We're a fucking team. Hello? That was killer. <laughs> yeah. Coming in. Here we go. I'm here. The radio set up in the secret archive. Okay. Just give me the signal. Lock it in. I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I am. Uh, good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. Well, then block it with something. I've got a big cabinet, but uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. Hold on. There's the secret archive itself, but uh, that's where the kill is going. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. Your judgment is kept me alive so far, Nash. What do you reckon? What were the options? Under the desk, no, he could see you. Hide among the cubicles. It's either the cubicles or the cabinet. It's either or. Yeah, he said the cabinet will take him a bit to get into. So then it'll take him a bit to get out of as well. And what if the cabinet, what if he closes it, he gets he's stuck in there. But no, if, we, if he hides in the cubicles, he's going to be too far away to lock the door. Cabinet's the best bet. Hide in your cabinet. All right. Well... It. Yeah, this is victory, you mean? Hello? Turn the radio up to full blast now. Keep it near the exit. We're trying to lock him in the room. I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. Listen to your old pal, Russell! Yo. Too soon? Forrest, and shut up! Forrest, I don't think... That was enough time for him... <laughs> it's a lot of pressure! Hide in your cabinet. Alright. Well... It. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. I just <laughs> don't say anything until I've had time to hide. How do I know Got when it? he's ready? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. Okay, I guess he has to say something. I think it should be safe now for us. That's it! No more hiding! I'm a tough old man. I've been on the beat longer than you've been alive. Come on down, whistling man. Come and get a knuckle sandwich. Hell yeah. Hell yeah! First try, by the way, first try. Listeners, this is Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And if you've just tuned in... See you in hell, kid! We've just locked up the whistling man. All right, I won't reload anymore. Beautiful bastard! <laughs> I can't 
believe that actually work. Was there ever any doubt? Seriously? Come on, Maurice. Was there ever any doubt? Come on. Oh, God, it's over. I'll be off now. Gotta get out of here. Write up a few notes. Call Perfect. Perfect. I feel safer waiting for the cops to come grab this freak with some company. Hey, maybe you and me could do an interview tomorrow for the Gallows Reporter. I'll think about it. Let's see what It'd be an brings. honor. It'd be an honor. I'll take that as a yes. Talk to you soon. Take care, Maurice. There we are, folks. What a legend. The Whistling Man is locked up. Let's all take a deep breath. A jazz and breath. And play some killer tunes. <sighs> I see what you, Peggy, I see what you did there. Oh, but Peggy, I like you. Get it? Looks like the night should be pretty easy from here on out. Right? Thank God that's over. I guess we got some downtime now. I could ask you some questions to kill the time? You're gonna interview me. You sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, we've been working together like a week now. And you're still all shrouded in mystery. I like to say mystery. Did it occur to you that maybe I like being a mystery? Too bad. Question one. Tell me about your family. What? Come on, Peggy. That, that's too different. Too bland, too bland. Okay. Did anyone move with you to nope. Gallows Creek? Solo. Nope. Now that's too specific. Too specific? I... Do you have any... siblings? I don't. I'm an only child, and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. Uh, you're sorry? Why did you do it? You're sorry? Why? Did you do it? Of course not. I only... I'm just messing with you. Anyway, what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. Well, we're you switching are... it up. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. I should say, oh, I don't want to pry. Oh. Yeah. My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck, and, well, that was dad. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget dad so bad, she even made me take my stepdad's last name. Oh. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day, and my mom didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Wow. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, huh. sorry. I was just trying to be... It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm defensive about that name. All good. Any siblings? Don't say Funny Peg. Funny you mention that now. No. Not anymore. Damn. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Older or younger? Hold on. Probably older. Someone just rang the door buzzer. What on earth could someone want at this hour? I oh, don't for know. real. Do you want to go check it out? Me? You <sighs> sure you don't want to go? I can't leave the booth while we're on air. Right. One of Reggie's K fam regulations. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. All right. Gee, thanks. <sighs> Gee, thanks, Peggy. The buzzer's on the front door. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. Okay. Down to the first floor, then check the door. She says, I'm on air. We're both on air. Hello, there's no I in this. We're a team. Do I have the cooties? You can. You hand me the key onto the... And just, I, I thought we were bonding. That's cool. Where are the stairs at? The, the, this is stairs? Oh, okay. There we go. Someone ring the buzzer. So downstairs, huh? A... Uh, tape. Tape. Play okay. on air. All right. I feel like I'm a Death Note now. A map. I feel like this will be important later. I don't know why. What if I just don't play, you know? But we could use the views. You know what I'm saying? We could use the views. Uh, we're going to throw you right here. All right, yo, Peggy, we have a, a theme bomb. Oh. Who was there? I didn't see who it was. Are they still out there? Nope. No. They left as soon as I went down there. They pushed a cassette through the door. It says, play me on air. All right. Well, turn the music off and play it. Boo. I will. You read my mind. Hold on, this thing likes to jam a lot. Hold on. Uh, 
Time to pay the. Yo, I'm not. Hold on, hold on. Re re rewind, rewind. Eject it. Damn. I fo Oh, I folded that shit. That shit was turned down. Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for lies. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for lies. Time to edge. Oh, punish you all. This, this what? All night. I did not enjoy that. Oh God. What the hell was that? I. Oh, Forrest, we're still on air. Say something. Oh hey hey. Uh, be careful. Folks, the, oh, <clears throat> folks, the tape you just heard was passed through our door only moments ago. I don't know how or why that came through our door with the killer locked up, but be careful, Gallows Creek. Stay home and stay safe. Give us a call if you need help. You can get us on 911. Damn! Now that has a good ring to it. That was pretty killer. <laughs> was that hey, it? we had a call come in. Oh, okay. Well, let's put him on. Collar, you're on 189.16, The Scream, with. Ash! Shut up and uh, listen to me! I Mr. miss Russell? you! What's wrong? Are you okay? I said, listen, he's gone. Wait, what? The whistling man is gone. How is he gone? Hello? What, hello? what happened? Well, after our call, I cleared the stairs and went home. Oh, did you take a warm shower? Damn, dude, how? what took you so long? I phoned some buddies. We came back here to keep watch. Then what happened? I'm getting to that. We came back here. Door was shut. Just as I left it. We had a couple of drinks, and, well, there was a bunch of us, and we were all armed. They thought we could teach the freak a lesson before the cops got Oh, they're bugging. A couple of drinks, I guess. Man, you know what? I would have done the same thing. Like, if, if I'm thinking about it, a couple beers here and there after barely surviving a killer. I don't blame you. I would have been tempted to do the same. Have you both got a screw loose? Oh my god, and Peggy, I'm about to screw you, dog. Get off my dick! You know what the whistling man's done tonight! This was not my idea! The guys just grabbed their weapons and unlocked the door. I braced myself and... Then? Then nothing. The room was empty. The door was still locked. How the hell did he get out? Are you sure it was still locked? Look around I'm the room. I'm telling you, it was locked. No way out of there. Not so weird. Maybe. I mean, a ghost? I know it's crazy, but if he's back from the dead, then... She's a conspiracy. Do you think he's some kind of ghost? She likes Peggy? conspiracy theories. It would explain things. I mean, how do we know he's not? Moni, there's no way. Oh, did you say something, Maurice? Baloney. Baloney. Oh, baloney. I said baloney. Look, Bruh. I don't want anything more to do with this. I'm clearing out a dodge. And I recommend you... And everyone listening, do the same. He seems really spooked. <laughs> Wouldn't you be if you got attacked by a serial Damn. killer who turned out to be a demonic spirit? <sighs> He's not a demon, Peggy. Did you not hear him, yeah, Peggy? He said baloney. Right. But what do we do now? Uh, we pray. What can we do? Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. We'll remove her from the suspect. <laughs> Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right. Okay. Hey, folks, we need to take a quick break. A little quick break. This one air out the place all a bit. Folks out there, keeping the hatches battened. Enjoy this classic by Smooth. It's their hit song, The Word. All right, Peggy, what's up? What's good? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. Uh, sure. Just go get it. Okay. Okay. Off here, so now. Are we off the air? This is Gina Franklin. I'm calling because your backwater station 
Association has not honored our agreement. We gave you Mr. Snatcher's newest single, the kind of honor you never had and probably never will again. This subtitles are broken. It's pissed me off. still not received any information about when you're fitting it into your busy programming. I'll be frank. I didn't want you as part of this debut, but Mr. Snatcher, due to his prior friendship with Mr. Nash... Prior and current friendship needs... The subtitles. Okay. We were friends? Are you a big fan of Roddy? I love Roddy. I will always find you was my song. I wish we still had it in rotation. Oh my god. I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe you didn't tell me he sent you his new single. Uh. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to K-Fam, not to me. Then it's got to be downstairs at reception. Man, I can't believe Barbara didn't say anything. I mean, well... If that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, folks at KFAM aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Well, go get Roddy's song before Gina sues the pants off us. Okay. Roddy this, Roddy that. I know a better Roddy. Roddy Rich. The fuck we doing, man? Where is the fucking thing? At the receptionist desk? Here? Is that it? This must be it. There it is. Final breath. My tiny selection grows. Hey, did you get it? I have Got it. it. Let's get this on the air. Ah! Gallows Creek. I'm pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, is a track you won't hear everywhere. There you go. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. Here we go. Wow. God, Roddy's the the insta glazing is insane. This is your average Drake fan. It was so yes. good. Homegirl started moaning yes. off rip. And more importantly, we should be safe from the worst of Gina Franklin. We won't get sued anymore. Hooray! We keep our money. And I think that's every time I've seen him live. Oh, Maggie, you just talked through the whole song. Holy oh, yap. Whoops. <laughs> it's okay. I can just play it on loop later. For sure. Oh, shoot. I just noticed we have a caller waiting. Oh, that person's really cooked. It's nothing serious. Way to go, Peggy. Over here going your little spiel about Roddy. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand-in. This is Murphy. What's up, Murphy? <laughs> Hello, Murphy. Uh, what have you got for us tonight? Two things, Forrest. All right, I'm here. Forrest. Happy birthday to my son, Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. He's free today. And man, being his daddy has changed my life. He's leveled up. I've learned how to live, how to laugh. And how to love? Most importantly, how to love. Oh, okay, Tumblr. Uh, happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday, chat. Happy birthday in the chat. Happy birthday in the chat. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so-called killer. You think you're tough, huh? Yo, okay, dog. I understand you have balls of steel. You have a son. Don't call out the killer. Big man with a big knife, huh? Ruin. Yikes. How many dumbasses are in this town? Jesus Christ. Come face me, a true warrior. Yeah. At the gallows waste disposal plant. Guess what? This is a bad idea, Murphy. This is a bad idea, Murphy. I got all the tapes in Master Robbie's Dojo series. Oh, because that's going to help you. We got ourselves Cobra Kai. Watch out. Man, you just let loose the junkyard dog. Oh, no. <sighs> and there he goes. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed for Murphy as he tries to become our hometown hero. <sighs> anyway. We'll be right back after this commercial. 
Yeah, run a commercial quickly. Jesus Christ. Okay, um, we've already played that one. Let's play this one. All right. Oh, excuse me. Shit. No way, we're playing the fucking thing. The irony. You want to double your power? Are you ready to unlock your inner warrior for only twenty-four ninety-nine? Then step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo. Step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo, man! Shout out to Murphy! Murphy, you got this! Master Robbie. Hell yeah, man! Come on now, hype him up! Hype him up! Hype him up! Not bad. To kick some ass. Hopefully, hopefully Murphy learned some some good things from there. Never forget the element of surprise. Oh! Oh my God! Wow. Do people really buy this kind of thing? I would have bought it. Don't pretend like you're not interested. I mean, I wouldn't buy them, but I might watch them. Okay. Yeah, I definitely would. Yeah, I bet karate lovemaking sure is something. Uh, I, uh... <laughs> is Forrest Nash at a loss for words? Hey, let's just get to the show. Back to the show, please. Keep it professional. Wow. Keep your cool. What a deal. Only $24.99. And I'm not just saying that because they're paying for the airtime. Just ask Murphy. But there you go. Pay us more, then it's time I'm to get so the show clean with along it. Along with our next caller. I'm so clean with it. We got a caller. I'm made for this lifestyle. Do. I know what to do. What's going on? Welcome to 816.16 The Scream. When you're ready, shut the music off. That, that was it correct? Hello, caller. You're live on The Scream with me. Or Snash. <sighs> Colgate. Seriously. You want a mint? Are you okay? Do you need help? Are you okay? Do you need help? Forrest? He called me? Okay, back up from the mic that a bit. Horrible whistling down the phone. Okay, what's your name? He's coming for me. Swear. Jesus. Okay, listen, Collar. Don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. A few times? We saved everybody so far. Good. You're in safe hands. Okay. You're good. Okay. Deep We're breaths. Jazz breaths. Can you tell me your name, caller? I'm Dr. Sullivan of Virginia. Sorry. Take Interesting. Some deep breaths, Virginia. You're going to be okay. Please don't let me die. That's not the plan. I won't. Just calm down. Tell me where you are right now. What's your address? I'm. I'm. Oh, God. Can you hide? Maybe you can hide in your house. Call a neighbor? Is there a neighbor you can call for help? No. Everyone's away tonight. Wow, they must hate you. Everyone's out of town and you're the only... Yikes. There's just a fraternity down the street. Okay. You by a frat house. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Takeout coming in all night. One covered in beer cans. What the hell am I doing here? They're getting wasted. And I'm about to get... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What's the name of the frat? It's... Oh, God. I can't think. I, I can't... Any idea what the frat might be, Peggy? Anything. If I knew so where we could call she was, them. I might know, but... What's your location? Wait, the takeout. If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them there you to go. go and help. There you go. Virginia. Or we could call the place. But I, how are we going to get the number? I don't know. Jesus. Uh, try to remember. Come on, Virginia. Try to remember. I can't. Well, folks, seems like our Virginia hung up. While we try to figure out what takeout to order, here's some music for your own midnight snacks. Peggy, 
What places do take out in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Uh, well, there's the barbecue place, Grilling Spree, and you can order from Chalupa Cabras. And of course, we have Ponte's Pizza. That's it, I think. Hey, let's just start calling. Right. We'll call each place and ask who they deliver to. There you go. Perfect. That's not going to work. Take out client privilege. So what? we got to order. There was a lot of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. But what we can do is this. We figure out where the frat boys ordered from, call the takeout pretending to be from the frat, place an uh, order, and include a note asking them to call the station. There's no other way, is there? Not that I can see. Why is this town so complicated, bro? Well, let's not waste any time. It has to be pizza. Everybody That's gets pizza. Everybody it. gets pizza at a frat. You're at a party, yeah, you're drunk, what do you want? Pizza. Check the offices for anything food related. And maybe the kitchen downstairs. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door. Okay. Now. Thanks, Peggy. Thank you, Peggy. What were the options? God, where to start? In the kitchen. What would make me order from somewhere if I were a partying frat boy? Pizza. Pizza or wings. Critic, right? Chad or Brad or... <sighs> I just have to look around. Look around, look around, look around, look around. Hammered, buzz. Grilling spree. I better see what's on this tape. But also, you would want to grill too if you're getting drunk. Hold on, we're off the air, right? Let me listen to this. What are the chances of that? <laughs> Great party, man. <laughs> Thanks. Can I grab another beer? Hey, sure thing. Let me grab you one out of the fridge. Sounds like a frat party to me. Oh, no. We've had a beer. That's a tragedy. The party is going to be over. Fear not. A grilling spree will give you a free six pack of beer if Gallus High wins this Tuesday. Did we win this Tuesday? That's right. Order a meal deal from us and you'll get a free six pack of beer if Gallus High wins. A free six pack? Righteous! You heard me. Six beers if Gallus High wins. Sounds like you've already had enough beers. <laughs> I hope we. <laughs> See, I would say the pizza joint, but the pizza joint called us to advertise their place. So they're not well known just yet. I don't think a party's gonna call a joint that, that's barely up and coming. And the free beer. Come on down to grill and spray on call. Free five, beer five, with five, grills five, eight, three, three, five, and gilfs? Barbecue you'll die for. This has to be it. A free six pack. Huh. I wonder how well Gallows High performed. Yeah. <laughs> hey Forrest, do you know what the Grill Reaper's favorite grilling spree order is? Lay it on I me. I have a feeling you're gonna tell me. Spare ribs. Oh Christ. So that has to be that, but let's go check around. I'm gonna say, I want to say the grill spree. That just seems like the proper joint to be going to. Same. Go Gallows High, I guess. Ah, they win the big game. If somebody wins a game, you hear free beer, you're there. All right. Hey, find anything useful? Sure did. Yes, I have. That's great. Are you ready to get back on the line? Sure am. Let's make the call. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Radio. Okay, Forrest, what'll it be? We're calling the grilling spree. Call grilling spree. Okay. Damn, hello? Sounds like I'm actually on, on a phone line. call. You're through to grilling spree. You've got barbecue you'll die for. Shit, let's see. Uh, hey, dude. Let's not say frat man calling. Hey, dude. What's going on? There you go. Uh, can I just have your order? I want ribs. Big, Big ribs. ribs juicy fry, ribs. Yeah. Where'd you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know. The frat house. Same address. All right. We'll get it to you soon. Leave a oh, note. And, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? A note? Okay. You better tip for this. Will do, sir. And I tip nothing but the best. We Perfect. Should put a song on. We should. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. Yeah, the flow. Go with the flow. Now it's time to go with the flow. And this is their hit, Crying for Help. Nice. Hopefully this job will be a fucking flow, man. Jesus Which Christ. Which of the takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? No, <sighs> where, where would you actually eat? Oh, 
I mean, they're all pretty equal. Oh yeah? Equally awful? You mean equally awful. No, equally good. But if I had to order, not Ponty. He's not Ponty. Right. So okay. between grilling spree and chalupa coppers. I think grilling spree. I mean, it depends. On the scenario? Do I want a plate full of meat? Or do I want really, really good nachos? It can change depending on the day, you know? Yeah, fair, fair enough. enough. Uh, maybe I... Pull up that thought, Forrest. We've got a call coming in. It's pizza, though. See, people like you make me sick. Just because it's pizza doesn't mean it's always going to be the best. There is some filthy pizza out in the world. Pizza's not always good. Time to turn the music off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, ah! Forrest Nash. Uh, this is Dudley from the Brotherly Fraternity of Engineers. <laughs> I have a note to call you. You hey, sure do. Weird question. Uh, but you aren't the only ones on your street tonight, are you? No, sir. I think everyone on the street is in tonight. Uh, yeppers. Uh, I just visually confirmed it. Uh, I see cars in the driveways and a couple of lights. Yeppers. On. Uh, everyone's in. Yeah. Gnarly, dude. And you've not been throwing a loud party all night, have you? I certainly hope we haven't disturbed our neighbors. Uh, why do you ask, sir? Forrest, we have a new call coming in. There's no way it's the wrong house. The fucking place said, yeah, we were getting orders to this house all the whole night. Everything lined up. Everything lined up. Forrest, line two. Hello, you're live on 189.16, The Scream. Forrest, it's the whistling man. He's at the door. He's... Oh, my God. It's you, isn't it? Clive, I didn't stop. Clive. I didn't talk. I think she was meant to die. Oh, dear God. Poor Virginia. I'm a fucking radio host. You killed her. You killed her. You can save her. Shut the hell up. She's gone. Accept it, damn it. Oh, my God. Free beer. Free beer. Free a six pack. Yeah, the pizza place had free beer, too, but so did the fucking grill place. Did y'all, like, not hear my fucking thought process before? Where was this when I said, Ponty seems like a new fucking place. Now everybody's like, you really fucked up, it was Ponty. God damn it. You did your best, Forrest. To ever Thank you. Oh my fuck, chat. Take some notes. And then she said, Clive, I didn't talk. Did she know the guy? I feel like she was meant to die. Everyone listening. They prank called the pizza before? You can't save everyone. Damn. Uh, last save was 103 seconds ago. She's dead. She's cooked. She's cooked. Unless we go all the way back, she's cooked. Things look bad, but please don't lose faith. We will. St the prank callers, they did want pizza. Oh, the prank callers were the fucking frat guys. That was so early in the game. How was I supposed to remember that? Oh my God. It's tough, man. It's over. Stop this whistling man. And I think Virginia may- Damn it, it builds character. It makes the story better. We're in a horror game. People are meant to die. Damn. <laughs> have just given us the clue we need <sighs> what was that about clive five i didn't talk yeah do you know what she meant there's a janitor here at the station named clive but your guess is as good as mine see but she gave us good information all right folks seems we may have a lead if any of you know a suspicious clive then please call in it could save lives it's time to scooby -Doo in the meantime shit. looks like we have another caller another caller Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me. Chad, listen, I'm not actually pissed off, all right? So it's just character, man. It's just character. Nash. Make it interesting. The story more interesting. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. Forrest Gump. As a local small business owner, oh, I find this all horrifying. A killer roaming the streets of our fair town? Ooh, terrible. Yeah. <sighs> I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe? Hold on, bro. Tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. It's a safe, 
family friendly place. It's fucking Ponty's. Good for you, friend. Good for you, friend. I'm glad you're keeping safe and busy. Thank you. Oh, I'm really living the American dream. You know what's crazy? He's clearly listening to the radio. He knows frat people are ordering the pizza. Why did he not tell us? Kill in my business. <laughs> you must really, really love your work. You must really, really love your work. Oh, I do. My small business really is my whole world. That's beautiful, man. That's truly, truly. Is it like your firstborn? What's your small business? Oh, well, I'm not really big on right. promotion, but uh, since you ask, it's Party's Pizza! The best and only pizza place in town! Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two for one. God damn it, Party, no! No free ads! <sighs> I That's wonder crazy. what would have happened if we called Ponty's instead. Look, he's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. Just take a deep breath and let's keep going. I'm so I'm so glad Peggy's here, bro. Evening caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16 The, the Scream. Scream. And tonight's not Hold on. 911 stand in. Hi. Hello? Eugene. Am I on air? Yes, sure, you are. Caller. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein, and I've got a heart full of love for us. That's beautiful, man, truly. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening to your show, looking up at the stars and waiting for her. That's beautiful, you man. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. I love me some Molly, too. If you know what I'm saying. Plans what a dork. Lost in the maze maze tonight. Take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. That's why I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it... This dude. I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Right. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming or wait and see? For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? You sh yes, yeah, you should be that's going home. why I'm calling. Uh, go home to your parents, man. Eugene, you really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually. But, uh... I'm so sorry. Oh, jeez. Wow. Yeah, I guess it's not the night. Hang on. I hear some rustling. I guess she came after all. Molly! No, I'm in the middle! No, 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 It'll no. take a little while to get here, but, uh... Thanks again, Forrest. Brother. Good talk. Yo. Oh, wait a second. Molly can't whisper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a second. <laughs> no, no. This is supposed to be the best night of my life. Not the worst. We'll get you out of this. Do you know? Okay, hold on. Let's, let's. Do you know the way out? Eugene, do you know the way out? It wouldn't be the maze maze if he could just remember the way for us. Peggy, I don't get you. Wait, I have the map. She's right. I Bingo. Here's what I was looking. I called that, dude. And for listen, Eugene, breathe, hide, and call back in a minute. We'll get you out. I. I'll do it for Molly. Yeah, yeah, for Molly. Yeah, think about Molly. Molly. Think about Molly. Do it for Molly, do it for Molly. Well, listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. Go ahead. Cue it up. You're gonna love this next track. He's in the middle. How the hell am I supposed to get him through the maze maze? You know Barbara, our receptionist? She's a maze maze fanatic. Shame she isn't here. I was supposed to go with her last week, but she changed her mind. Um... Mm, maybe we should call Barbara, no? Like, if she's a fucking maze fanatic. Maybe we should call Barbara then? If she's so big on the maze maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. But she probably has maze I already have it. Somewhere. Go and see what you can find. That'll hopefully be enough. Uh, which one? Receptionist? Barbara again. Barbara! You know, Barbara! Yeah, Barbara! Uh, For sure. Forrest, I've seen you speak to her. Help me out, Peggy. She's the receptionist. 
sits at reception, never does any work because she's talking to Brad all day. Ah. Ring any bells? Nope. Right. Yeah. Sorry. I guess it's just the stress of. No excuses. Just go and find something to help us. Right. What's the point of the numbers? Scarecrow, pitchfork statue, realistic looking horse statue, pig statue, golden hay bales, tractor statue, farmer hat, mini barn. Mini barn's a dead end. Beehives. If he was to leave, he would need to go down. Okay, I already see the exit. I see the padding. Any luck? Yep. I found a map for the maze maze in the trash. Why was it in the trash? But never mind. It doesn't matter right now. That's a question for Barbara later. Eugene called while you were away. He's on line one. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Yeah, yeah, this is serious. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I hope you lovers like that track. And I hope we can help our lover in the maze maze. Eugene, you're back on air. Welcome back, Eugene. <laughs> I'm lost, Forrest. Okay. I just ran back. That guy really does how to reach I octaves. Am. Jesus! I'm at a crossroad. There are hay bales. Make a left. Cold on my right. Yeah, yeah, he needs to go up. On his right, go left, go left, go left, go left. Go left. All the way up. Take the first right you see when you make a left. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I won. I went left. Then tried a right. I have a pig statue in front of me and a creepy rocking horse on my left. So then behind you. Pigs in front of you go backwards. Go backwards. Oh, God. Why didn't I just fight her over? Oh. I'm at a crossroads. There's a pitchfork statue up ahead. Which way? Left, left, left. Go left. Oh, this wasn't how tonight was meant to go. Eugene, put yourself together. I just wanted something. I feel you, man. I want some top two, but. Preferably from a MILF, but it's okay. A tiny barn in front of me. Tiny barn. And a scarecrow behind me. Nothing to my sides. Make a right, make a right. A scarecrow behind him? That's six, right? Right, 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 right. Go right. You better see a fucking beehive in front of you, dog. I can't run. Much more. Think of Molly! I just passed. A cordon silo. Didn't see anything else. A corn silo? Please. Where do I go? I know, but where from the corn silo? He passed it? What does passing it mean? So then... Go forward, no? Forward. Go forward. Okay. Here I go. He's cooked. This, uh, uh, doesn't look right. Uh, no, no, I I'm going back to where I was. He's cooked. Jesus. Oh, shit. He's cutting through the walls. Where do I go? He just passed the corn slime and didn't see anything else on the way. Dog. I guess right now, right? 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 We're going right. It has to be right. Right. I, I see it. Uh, I'm out. But my bike's still here. Go, go, oh, go, go. Thank God. Thank you, Forrest. What can I say? I know my way around the fucking woods, around the forest. What can I say? It's in the name. I love you, Molly. For Molly. Oh. Heart to the chat for Molly. That was... Tense. I think I held my breath the whole time. My heart's going. Shame the maze maze got all cut up. Yeah, better it than Eugene, though. By the way, why do you think Molly missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. I mean, did you hear Eugene? I wouldn't want to leave home either. And thank you for calling in, Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. Report a Clive to stay alive. Next caller is up, Forrest, so take it away. Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16.
The Scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Thank you. I don't know about wonderful, but uh, thanks. What's your name, Collar? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. We got it. Yeah. I, think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. Sure thing, Don. All right, folks. Sexy ass voice. Is that old classic? Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're gonna find that. Song. Yeah, it's not here. Where what is do you it? Mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but uh, we don't have it anymore. What? what are you talking about? Why? I threw it away. You, you threw it in the trash. You threw away no, a I, masterpiece. I threw it out the masterpiece window earlier today. Masterpiece equal to the Beatles. Why would you do that? Why? 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 Uh, and why did you throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. Oh my god, how do you not like Peak? So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. I don't even know the song, but I know not it's Peak. Not my finest hour, but I can only take so much. For shame, Peggy. For shame. For shame, Peggy. For shame. I know. Let's just play a different song. I don't think We've she's going to want that. we things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks. Here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Don. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. Late night lurkers. How about that? Listen in to this next track from Late Night Lurkers. If you dare. If you dare. Of all the songs to request, why did it have to be that one? Oh, here comes Peggy. Peggy. What did the barn finds ever do to you? Wrote that song for one. It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. <sighs> why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, uh, Forrest, scrap Roddy the this, song. Roddy that. We have another caller. Okay, let's let's get it. Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nat. Murphy. Forrest. Oh, thank God. It's me again. Murphy. Murphy, what's going on? Talk to me, Murphy. What's wrong? Oh, the killer got me, man. You're alive. He clearly, I... he didn't a good, do a good job. Why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robin? It's okay, man. Should happen. Warned you not to. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Okay. Forrest, we need to do something. Okay. Goddamn Gleason. He came for the gallows waste disposal plant. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in a dumpster. He didn't kill you. I why? I got a flashlight. But... Oh. Oh goddamn. I smell smoke. Oh. I think he started a fire. No, he's Hold definitely killing you. Call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now, or I'm gonna die. Can bro just use his fucking karate frog mindset, praying mantis centipede move on a door and bust it down? Like, Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. All right. Now just come on, pick up. Yo, it's the fire Hi. department. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? What? He... Oh, God damn it! Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. Jesus. They can't do anything, but I have a few yeah, knows what he's doing. Nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Yo. My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the okay! east end of Myers Lane. But he's... Okay, old. so that guy, last option's out of the way. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Oh, oh my god, thank god. Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield Road, right next to Romeo Street. Romero Street. Haddon, 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 Haddon. Romero Street. There it is. He's he's the closest to it. There's Gallows Waste Disposal right there. Get this shot the way. Who cares about the traffic? Gallows Creek Road closures. East side, McReady Street will be closed from the 2nd to the 9th of September for maintenance. 
Residents will be unable to access the connected road between Rogers. I was about to just throw away useful information. Holy hell. From Rogers Avenue and Haddonfield Road. Residents will be able to access the connected roads between. So these roads are not workable. Not usable. Okay. Whew. Jesus Christ. Stay right there. Corner of Haddonfield Street and Romero Street. Where is Romero? So here? Brother, brother lives right across from Gallows. He could just take you and then go up. Oh, this? He's down here? That's his house. Right next to Romero Street. Yeah, so he could just take Haddonfield Road and he's there. They said the roads between Rogers Avenue and Haddonfield Road is, is uh, under construction. Not the actual road itself. So he just walks out and goes up. I feel like that's the best option. But let's, let's, you know, let's look at other ones. Catherine lives on West End of Myers Lane. So here. So then, no. She, she, she can't go anywhere. She's stuck. So Catherine's out the option. Uh, old man. We're not using an old man. Seriously, what's this one? Fire department, get more fire engines. Lol, true. Alex. I think Alex is the best. Last save. I'm confident, bro. I'm confident. I saved. I'm confident. I know where. Let's fucking lock it in. All right, Forrest. Who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Alex. Call Alex. All right. Give me a second. I'm confident in this one. Holy shit. We have the man in the chat. Not only in the game. He's going in. I'm here. Send me in, coach. Oh, my days. What a hero. All right, Alex. Good luck. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct. Alex, you're going to fucking make this, man. I believe in you. You got the information. I better see you type in the chat. Direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. You got it, man. I believe in you. Forrest, I'm getting a call. Is it Alex? Alex, let's see how you sound. Well, Are you sure you can't? Oh. What's happening, Peggy? Alex was too far away. Too slow. The plant burned down. It collapsed. So Murphy is... Poor Fernando is gonna be crushed. What? Alex! You got tired?! Put me in, coach! You fucking... What the... Nah, I'm reloading. I'm reloading. I have to reload. But who else can go? No way it's the old man. The old man's the closest. The old man's the closest. If Alex couldn't make it from here to there, there's no way Catherine lives at the end of West... Lives at the West End of Myers Lane. She's not gonna make it, dude. It's the old guy. Oh my god. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We just got word. Old grandpa. Let me in. Let me send me in. Send me in. Previously subbed for one month. You can't make this shit up. He did not make this account. He's actually here live. Okay, man. I'm trusting you. Yeah, because if Alex couldn't make it down a workable road that far, there's no way Catherine's gonna make it. We gotta send the old man. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? We're saying the Gramps. Gramps. Call Jericho. All right. Give me a second. Oh, nah. <gasps> He's cooked. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. Forrest, I'm getting a call. Oh, no. Are you sure you... It's fucking Catherine. Where's Grandpa? Where's grandpa? Grandpa. My B I sold. Mother. It's okay. It's okay. It's not your fault. I'm the dumbass here. For little Fernando! For little Fernando! Call Catherine. I don't get it. I'm a failure. Alright, give me a second. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. That just doesn't make sense. Call coming in. It's Catherine. She and Murphy are now both on the line. Hello, Catherine. Are you there? What, uh, what, what's happening at the plant? The whole damn thing is up in smoke. I... Oh, God damn it. I'm going in. <gasps> oh, my reception is terrible in here. God, my eyes stink. Um... Oh, wait. Waste disposal. Waste disposal. Right, yes. Go to waste disposal. Yeah. Got it. Okay, I'm here. I Oh, Forest. It's coming down. I got to go. Forest. 
I, 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 I will. What is it? Tell him. Tell him to. Tell him to study Kung Fu. I'm a real master. And go kick the master off his ass. Oh, God. I gotta reload, bro. I gotta reload, bro. Ah! Murphy, can you see anything at all? Yeah. I got a little flashlight. I was talking to Murphy. Looks like old cans. I forgot they're on the same line. Bottles and newspaper. What does it say on the newspaper? Who cares? It's the Henderson headline. What was that? My reception is terrible in here. Please, force, tell me where to go. Recycling. Go to recycling. Recycling. Come on, Catherine. The plant's messed up again. I can go shredding or crushing. Which way? Murphy, do you know what part of the plant you're in? I'm in a dumpster, man. What do you want from me? Do you see anything? Just tell me what you can see, Murphy. I've already told you. I, f I choked it. 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 Just a bunch okay, of so it's shredding. Shredding. Plants. Okay. It has to be the shredder. It has to be the shredder. Let me. Do you hear anything, Murphy? I hear my heart about to pound out of my chest. Put the receiver up to the lid. Cut it up. Catherine, go to the crusher. Henderson! 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 Henderson container. The lock is I found him! Thank God! Let's hold ass! It's coming down! Oh shit! For Fernando. We made it. Oh man, you saved my life. First time, first time. Thank you, thank you, and, and I swear to you, now I'm gonna raise Fernando to be like you. You know this town isn't too bad. I'm getting my money back from Master Robin. Hey, you just get home to your son, okay? Damn do, fucking folks. straight. Damn fucking. Well, folks, Gallows Creek has two folk heroes tonight, Murphy and Catherine. I'm sure their deeds won't soon be forgotten. Great job, Forrest. No time to celebrate, though. We got a caller. You know what to do. All right, folks. Another of our good citizens is Let's on get the it. line. Let's see what they have to say. First Welcome try, first try, first try. The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest? Teddy Gallo. Oh, the mayor. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors. Right. During this awful time. Yeah. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of... Bro, she's trying to get good PR. Law and order. Oh, brother. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know you're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up to bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Oh, brother! Jackass. I'm about to... I'm about to... I'm about to... Mm. I want to make sure I get this out on air to all of Gallows Creek. You're a real prick, Teddy. 
I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, I was looking outside. Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, which employs over 200. Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. Shut the hell up, seriously. You know what? I do. Oh, really? Whippy Kaye. A problem that's ruining our town. What, you? you know what it is? Emergency, not problem. I didn't ask about a problem. I said emergency. The problem is that woman, our current mayor, Linda Cartwright. Oh, here we go. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un-American, unstable, and- You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it- Your producer sounds a little- So he's sexist. Unstable too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Sexist off, racist? Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when Shut I up. take office. The moral decay of- Yeah, and jackass. that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. Amen. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us. That guy pissed me off. We'll be right back after these messages. Yep. Let's uh play me on the air. What's... This is all we have left. Yeah, this, I think this is the only we have left. The world famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is back! We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Cornhole, Corn on the Cob, Oh, yeah, we are on the sticks. Music, can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamborees, Juggling, Roller Rickies, Roller Disco Lessons, Praying. We got baby crawling, balloon popping, balloons for sale, beard contest, horseshoes, hayride, hay toss, hay firearm, fireworks, funnel cakes, fried dough, sheets, bitten sand, licking, cracker, cramming, and cat shop. And fake tattoo, face painting, puppets, petting zoo, amazing maze maze, square dance, and story swapping, spelling bee, quilting bee, and sewing circle. Pie eating, lawnmower racing, hot dog eating contest, flower contest. Well, damn! Measure up. I zoned out for a second. Brother's still going. The festival is brought to you by Mayor Linda Cartwright, sponsored by Gallows and Sons Factory, and dedicated to the memory of Garrett Miley, tragically taken from us last festival. I can see why it's world famous. It's a highlight around here for us. Oh, I am sorry to hear that, Peggy. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. We have a note from my producer. That's right. Come find me at the Harvest Festival tomorrow to grab your choice of a KFAM mug, sticker set, or poster. Cool. Let's see what our next caller would choose. Caller on line one. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <laughs> oh, man. Here we go. Lock in. Uh, hello. Caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? What's going on? There's a guy hunting me and my friends. I, I think he's killed some of them already. Yikes. That's him. Okay, hide. He's just outside. I can see him from up here. God damn it. She's just a kid. Where are you? Where are you? Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, stay with me, kid. Focus. I, I can't do this. Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me. What's your name? You're cool. Relax. You okay? Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Carrie. Okay, Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. I'm at the end of a hall. End of a hall? There's, there's a bathroom, like a entrance closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? How do I know? 
Closet. I feel like closet is too obvious. Maybe go to the bedroom behind the bed. I think bedroom, dude. I think bedroom. I say bedroom because you can hide. Bathroom is only one hiding spot. Sure, you can lock it, but if it's locked, you'll know. Bedroom, you can jump out a window. You can hide under a bed. Go to the bedroom. Okay. Don't forget, it's a kid. Exactly. Even better. The youthful. They fall down, pump their adrenaline, and they'll be fine. He's here. He's here. He's gonna kill me. Forrest, I don't think we can... I don't think she should move. Don't move! Till next stream, guys. Till next stream. I see, but she threw it. Oh, oh no! Forest. <laughs> oh fuck! What's wrong with these people? What is okay, this? What the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? It's just a joke. Jeez. Oh Wait. hell no! There's a killer loose! Isn't that Jimmy? That wasn't funny, you sicko! Of course I called the cops, but, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? Forrest Nash. What the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. Just having fun. That's oh, the kid. man. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. Uh, you're sick, Jimmy. He's out there, Jimmy. I think we should warn him. He's out there. But let's be... <sighs> we should be a responsible adult, huh? We should be the responsible adult and say go home. He's still a kid. I mean, both of these will warn him in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Wait, he's not a kid. Well, he sort of is. He's out there, Jimmy. You know he's really out there tonight, Jimmy. Right? Right. It's just whistling night, man. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? <laughs> <laughs> is that you? Is Wait. That you? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh... Uh... Wait. Oh no. Who, uh, who are you? Oh no, man! Everyone, get inside! Everyone, run! You two, Thor, Scott Heather, you better take the back! As long as he's out there and we're in here, we're safe, right? Yes, time. but not much. Not much. Fucking Jimmy died! <laughs> oh my god! Way to go, Jimmy! Seriously! Forrest, we have to... Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Yep. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend, we drove out to the old murder house and... Uh, um, of course! The van! Who's got the keys? Interesting. Jimmy had them. Jimmy. Jimmy. Of course. <gasps> Carrie, stay with me. You're the leader of the group. Okay, okay, it's gonna be okay. Okay, okay. It's gonna be okay, Carrie. Right. Right. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's gotta be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're gonna get killed. <sighs> if only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes, she's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. Forrest, listen. Yep, she's the smartest. We'll see what we can come up with and, uh, what? Scott, you're not any good at- Of course it's a Chad. No, no, Chad. Of not course, of Chad. Us, you're not the one to... 
Stepping out of line. Everything Jesus okay? Christ. Yo, Carrie, keep them in check, man. <sighs> We're figuring out a plan. The only one with Everyone common knowledge, common sense. Bad at. I think we can figure out what to do. But I don't think we can agree on who should do what. <sighs> Jesus. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker. Oh, wow. Or else these idiots are going to get us killed. But I... Shut up, you... Oh, Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friend. Oh God, we don't. Well, hello? How, 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 why am I there? I'm, I'm not there. What the fuck? She's got to be smoking dicks. <gasps> These damn kids never learn. Uh, are you okay? Are you okay? Uh, they do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks, we're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trapped kids out there. <laughs> Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna end it there. We're like halfway through the game. I'm pretty sure we're halfway through the game. I think that this is the perfect spot. Keep y'all hostage till next stream. Till next time. Continuation. Droid starves his mods. He has locked in his basement. Lucid, you're stepping out of line. Don't you want bread tonight? Someone's not getting a fucking piece of loaf. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere. Where are we at? Downstairs, I heard. What was the last thing we did? Oh, we need to save Carrie, right? Okay. And Jimmy's dead. All right. <laughs> okay. Go see if I can. Loser. <laughs> Loser. Find her desk. Dumbass. She has something we can use. Which one is? Is this not her desk? I thought she was a receptionist. Is it not? No, she's an intern. Where the hell does the intern be held at? In the janitor's closet? I need a key to get in there. Do you need a key to get into the egg, <laughs> brother? What? What do we do? There's a fire. They got her Jeez. sleep. This is. They really tucked Jeannie away. That shit's so sick of him. Not gonna lie. Hello. Friendship quiz. This might work. Yo, what happened? I'm armed! I have a- I have- Pick up the scissors, chump. I- I have a mug! Fear me! Genie's and Carrie's friendship quiz. Oh yeah, they're friends! The BFFs for lifers! You think they have matching bracelets? You think they made like a, a blood pact? What a leap. Alright, let's- let's- let's study. Most likely to peak Mount Everest. Heather. Someone finds David hot. Most likely to win the award for the worst poker face. Cynthia. Most likely to end up in prison. Seth. Okay, so Seth is crazy. Most likely to escape prison. Jennifer. Jennifer needs to be the one to run away if she has that finesse. Most to become an, uh, an Olympic athlete. Okay, never mind. We need David. All right. Is it back? I swear. Oh, hell. Oh. <laughs> Most likely to pass their driving test without any errors. Jimmy. Jimmy is the getaway driver. Oh, Jimmy's dead. Oh, hell. Most likely to win an Oscar. Maybe they can like really reach, reach the heart of the whistly man. Most likely to be everyone in, in go-karting. Okay, so Scott or Scott needs to be the driver. Most likely to trip or run away in a horror movie. Jimmy's already fits the criteria. Most likely to end up in a car crash. Scott's not driving. Whatever. Lock it in. We're winging the hey, shit. You find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one. Whenever you're ready. Will do. When you're ready, shut the music off. This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Real. Carrie, are you there? You still here with yes. us? We've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. All right. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. Uh, Bet. I'm ready. What's the first step? <sighs> okay. First things first, we'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. Then Heather. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. <laughs> Homeboy's name really is in a serious scenario. They're still gonna call him Hot David. We need Heather, clearly. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather, he picked you. Now please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two, the whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, someone to pick the lock a like likely to be in prison seth, jennifer seth. and scott all want to do it but likely to escape from prison jennifer getting into prison's easy go to a convenience no i'm joking jennifer jennifer jesus jennifer you carry a bump key why didn't you say so earlier 
Anyway. Fucking children, bro. Fuck, man! That brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. The I van keys. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll probably be easier that way. That is part four. This plan is someone to roof for Eagle Eye, someone to pick lock, someone to grab the keys. This plan is ambitious. Clearly, it's fucking impressive. I'm the one that fucking thought of it. This is a very detailed plan. I'm I'm impressed. Oh no, yeah. for sure. It's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. Oh, so an actor? The fast runner. Oh, the best so. One, we're trying to decide between. You know, who was it again? Hot David, Hot Heather. David. Cynthia and Scott. Uh, yeah, definitely not Heather. It's Hot David. Hot David's got Hot this David. shit. <laughs> yeah, you uh, you spend a lot of time running shirtless. Like, am I just a fucking third wheel? You got this, Hot David. Oh, does he? Carrie and David sitting on a tree. K I S S I N G. We get the eyes on the roof. Fucking kids. The runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. The getaway. Ooh. What's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man, but he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid teens. Which y'all are. So, Don't forget that. Let's use that against him. So we need an actor. Five, we trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable bait? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy... And Cynthia. Tammy has the worst poker face. It needs to be Lisa. Lisa. Whoa. You're right, Lisa. Having to smile at rude customers is perfect practice. That should take care of the killer. All right. And then it's time to get out of here. Finally. <laughs> it's all coming together. And back to Gallows Creek alive. I didn't read a lick of what the fuck she just said. I was too busy being a good Samaritan. What did she just say? A driver. Who's a good driver? Scott, Cynthia, oh. Definitely not Scott. Forrest, you know what to do. Uh, where is the go-kart? Scott is the best at driving, but he's also most likely to crash. We have David, Chad. It needs to be Chad. Scott and Cynthia are, are both listed to crash a car. So it's Chad. Chad. Oh, perfect. Your go-karting experience will Oh, hell no. Nah. Boy, never say that shit again. Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves. All right. Lock it in. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. They don't need luck, Peggy. They got me. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. Right? Impressive as hell, right? Damn straight. Hey, you sweet fucking bippy. Peggy, we should make some vigorous love. Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. If you're just tuning in. We're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Hell yeah. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Right on. Good luck. Good luck. Godspeed. Godspeed. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Smarter. To the roof. Watch everything fail, man. Go, Heather. She's off and away. All right, Renner. Okay. Get ready. Wait for the spotter's signal. <laughs> Bro, who's walking like Squidward over there? Hello? Oh. Watch, everything's gonna go fucking perfectly. The keys. Fart on Harry, it. You need to get the oh, yeah. keys. Get the keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. He got God. Oh, God. She needs to focus. Focus. Breathe. Breathe. Right. right. <laughs> the keys. Womp womp. Seriously. Fucking lock it in. Don't be the fucking anchor. We got him. It's up. Jennifer got the gate unlocked. And hot David should be back any second. Perfect. Hell it's yeah. Working. I can't believe it's actually working. You're doing great. Focus. You got this. We got this. Next step, trap the killer. Which the All killer's right. gonna get out of. Wait. Get into position. Everybody else. 
headless head is. Hide. And scene. Is it time for the Oscar? Okay, performer. Now, act like your life depends. This is ridiculous. They have a fucking an escape route, a getaway. And now they're trying to be fucking the Scooby Doo cast. On it. Ah. Oh. There he is. Ah. He's buying it. Oh, this killer's fucking stupid, bro. Ah. There we go. More! More into it! More ah. into it! Push the bookshelf over! Oscar, my ass! You're fucking goaded! Spotter! You need to climb down now! Damn, you voice crack. Go. This shit got me amped up. He's coming down. Bro, I wanna Here I wanna come. be there. Heather! Quick, everyone to the van. Yes, Heather! Yes. Alright. It's actually going smoothly. I mean, no duh. Fucking, I or orchestrated this. Come on now. <laughs> All right. Huh? What? It won't stay open. I'll hold it. Here we go. You drive through. Carrie's gonna sacrifice herself. Carrie. What was that? Oh my god. Please, no! No! Carrie? <sighs> At least it was quick. Just... Wait, what? He just stared at me. Huh? Carrie? Carrie? Just stared at me and walked into the woods. Oh, 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 oh. What'd you do, Carrie? I don't understand. Thank God you're Holy okay. Holy hell. Can you get somewhere safe? <sighs> Why? I can make it home. Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I... It was your plan, Carrie. And it was a great plan. It was all you. It was really all you, Carrie. Still, I need to get home. Breathe, Carrie. I mean, it wouldn't have been possible if I wasn't there, but you know, it really was all you. Carrie, you're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. All right, cool. Why? Why did he oh, not so kill her? Sorry. That was a lot. A lot to handle. Our Some heavy shit. Thoughts go out to Jimmy's parents in this awful time. Truly. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Not too Here's tight. Don't snuff them out. You know what I'm saying? Girl walking home in the dark. Late night lurkers. Because she's lurking and it's late night. All teams except Jimmy survived. Come on! Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Oh, my fault. Forrest Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189 16 The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest. What's good? I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallus Creek tonight. Why, thank cool you. What you doing, man? Just doing um, what I can. Just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink trying to get everything ready for the harvest festival tomorrow. that's what's up yo i had a guy from starling security here earlier installing the starling 4000 system whatever so that means I'm sounds amazing behind. as for my name my friends call me roller ricky oh yeah I now consider you a friend my man right on thanks friend we're friends now huh well that's kind of you to say thanks yeah man sounds like roller skating is more ricky doodah -dog grimes so is this vocational i wasn't always roller ricky once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. Swear. Yeah. Really? Back then, things were pretty rough. 
Oh. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went Rick and down. Morty? I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottle. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. That bottle took the best years of my life. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems and sharing that burden just... Well, what do y'all say? Womp womp? No, like deadass? I am interested in the story. It took so much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. Damn. And, fun again, and then and Roller shapes. Ricky was born. Now whenever I get down, I get down. Okay. Finally free down and dirty. Man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? Oh. Oh, hello, Max. Also. Awesome. Also. Awesome. Hey. Oh. I am also. I am saving this guy. He has a dog. I'm going to reload as many times as it fucking takes to save this guy. He's a good boy. Well, he certainly sounds like a good Damn boy. Damn straight he Man, does. My emotional support. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking He's a about. Rescue dog. Dave, okay. The one that rescued me. Ah. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. My best friend. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. Swear. Me now. What? Max can skate. Yeah, man. At first they said Where it any be footage done, of this? And then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. This He's is got up. that special how to greet them. You're a great pair. <laughs> it sounds like you two make a great pair. Uh, Maxie two peas in a pod. all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, can I request a song for us? Of course. Something I can right go away. to. You know, something funky. What you want, my It'll man? It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a level. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. You got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. Let's get the flow. What's that one? The hangups. Here comes one of my favorites. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. On God. Yeah, I get that. Damn, it's this game's wholesome, yo. My taste, but it is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. On God, it is. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. <sighs> You were thinking about Max on skates, right? I think we all were. Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. 189.16. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I'm so good at my job, man. Damn. How tonight, caller? How's it going? I'm doing okay. Hey, Carrie. I'm safe. Carrie! Hey, I, I just wanted to thank you for doing what you It was all you, man. Good stuff. No. We lost Jimmy, and I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You did the best you could. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't. Why am I? Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? It's a very good After question. What he did. Why let me go? He saw he's a victim. He wanted prank stars. He got bored. He saw he's a no. He likes killing victims. He wanted the prank stars. The pranksters. Wow, prank stars. What the fuck am I saying? I don't know. Maybe he only wanted to hurt the pranksters. I... Maybe. Did he just think everyone was making fun of him? Did he always hate these hazing rituals? I, I mean, if he did, why wait all these years to... Why do this now? It's a good these question. stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thank Shit, here's hoping. Hey, Forrest, could I request a song? Sure. Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And thank you. This next one goes out to Carrie. Um, yeah. Blast. Ah, they're right at the very front. Who would have thought? 
You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? Maybe they're related some sort there of way? There must be a reason. When it comes to masked whistling killers, there's never a reason. I don't think a reason at all. Is a key part of their Dude's process. a lunatic. Well, it's something to consider. I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Oh. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. Oh, Jesus. Just pop my back. All this caring, fuck, man. What would this town do without me? All right, um, let's uh, let's get back to it, shall we? Let's get going, Peggy. Alrighty, we could run another segment or scratch that for us. We have a caller. I bet. Time to turn the music off. You're through to 189.16, the scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, that call with Is this is done. Awful, those poor kids. Still, I'm I'm glad the girl didn't get hurt. Thanks True. for your concern. Yeah, it's are kind you of in you. trouble? What's on your mind? What's going on? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. You said you were gonna play it. Oh, we sadly. Your name was Dawn, right? Yeah. Peggy. Yes. Oh, well remembered. I remembered it first. My name is Dawn. I need my and affirmations. I to ask you again to play my tune. Forrest. Yeah, Peggy kind of chalked it. Uh, you know, she yeeted it out the window. Outside the window. Uh, maybe. Wait, were we on the air when she knew that? How did she know? I'll play a track for you, Don, but maybe pick another one. We don't I think exactly we're on there. How would she know that? Right now. No, Forrest. You do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. Yeah. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I think I'd rather stay I'm inside, really cozy sorry, with the Dawn, heat. But we just can't get it right now. And the safety. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That Doesn't matter. Doesn't change the point. The station. It won't take you a second to grab it. He's fast. Don, I'm not he teleports. Sure heard, but there's something unnatural about this freak. He's he's fast. I'm not risking it. Oh, but I think you will. Forrest, Peggy, I'm, I'm calling with more than a request. I'm gonna need 10 gifted. You know what I'm saying? I know something. I think I know who's gonna be next. What? Right. Play my song, Forrest, and you'll find out. I'm next. <sighs> A well, little. Folks, we have the Riddler. For you. We have the Riddler. Well, I, Epic, dude. Over. Uh, dude, so cool. No, fuck the fuck is she singing song? Peggy? On God. She's serious about hearing that song. That's well, no, sure. duh, but like. Peggy, I mean, is she serious? But the killer. I don't know, Forrest. But we don't really have a choice, do we? How does she know? She unless she is the, the killer. Truth. All right. I'll all right. All right. All right. All right. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. Our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it... Uh... You know, I never thought about it, but... Yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. I see? Me and fucking Forrest are the same way. Why the fuck is it locked? Anyway, Hello? I'll hold the fort down while you're out. I... Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16. The Scream. With me. Peggy. There you go. You're a natural. The fire exit. Wait. Yo, this is... Yo. Ring any bells? I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man. On God. Out here. All for the record. In the open. Alone. Alone. Completely alone. I hope no one comes up behind me and stabs me in the back with a knife. Oh no, I hope no one drops it knees and gives me no oh, shit. And gives me head. Where did we throw it out? What is that? A battery. Near a window. So over here then, no? <clears throat> Which window would she have thrown it out of? What does this do? Yo, what does this do? What did I just do? I don't like that. Here it is. Long ride home. It's right there. No dub, but like, why is this a thing that I could do? I'll leave it here for later. Yo, it's locked. It's locked. 
It's locked. Of course, it locks behind me. And of course, the key doesn't work on this side. Why is there no? Where's the door handle? Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. Through the a, basement. A door, elevator, or something. Let's see. Was this a button? Nope, it's not. Can't go down here. Wait, what's? And that's broken too. Only the best for KFAM. Did I just? Let's see if I can fix this. Looks like a power issue. Did I not just fix that? I should check the fuse box. I used my foresight. It should be. There we go. It's already in there. Yo, hello. I fixed it. I might have broke the game. I think I say before the call of the dog. That's lame. Okay. Well, what can I do? No. You find. <sighs> no. Find anything that'll help us. Out I'M A GENIUS! I did not want to go through all that again. This fuse is everywhere. Yeah, there's numbers. I don't think I have to replace all of them. If I was able to replace all of them, all of these will look interactive. Looks like I'm you gonna can. have to hunt around for some new fuses. Interesting. Se okay, it needs to equal to 70. So that's 35. 15, this is 45. Let's keep that. Okay, easy. Okay, 30 is too much. 20 should be enough. What are you? Five. I think this should be it. What are you? Hello, what are you? Oh, I think I'm gonna be sick. 15, 15, 30, 30, 60. Is there one that's 10? We don't have a 10 one, do we? We don't. So then one of these, one of these 15s needs to go. 20, that's 50, 65, 70. Like, come on. Perfect fucking score. What's his name, O? Woo! What a great victory! I hope no one comes out and stabs me! I could probably survive that fall. Come on, Forrest. What are you, that weak? Jesus Christ. We should really... We're really leaving a fucking opening for the killer. Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clive? Yo. 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 Yo, what is all this? What is this? Leave the doors open. What are they locked behind me? What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. What's the keys for? Huh. There's a key. I'll Basement just stairs. Take that. Uh, important. How is Forrest so calm about this? Dog, look, look what the fuck's going on. Oh my god. I've seen Cobra Kai. I'm fucking crazy. I'm not like Murphy. I know actual moves. I'll put you in missionary. Hmm. I wonder how the show's going. If Peggy's dead, if my boo thing is, is cooked, I'm committing manslaughter. Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something well, you put happen. me on the mission. Clive the janitor might be Clive the, the murderer. murderer. What? Good title, huh? Start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door locked behind me. So. Yep. Wait, yeah, what the fuck? Did we all just stay on air? No, we didn't. Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. Yep. All right, let's run through this again. Okay. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement. This is true. Made by our creepy janitor. Yes. Who you think is the creepy whistling man. Correct. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Sure. Correct. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's Clive's next target. That's right. Yep. And we've got to find them. You said there are four locations listed there too. The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer. Yeah. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're going to have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. It's okay, where has he been tonight? He's been to the maze. He's been to the gal's waste disposal. Okay, so he's going after these people. 
Car club, athletics club, improv club, car club. Two people in car club. One in improv, one in athletes. Aunt Williams, Kim Walker. There's no carry on this. Did these people bully him? How do we know who will be where from this stuff? Okay. Trailer for sale, cheap. I'm sick of being a local celebrity. People are being so mean to me. I only stole a few cars. Who cares? Buy a new one. I'm selling my trailer and leaving town ASAP. I just want to get out of here. Please buy it. Taylor, Tyler Wallace. Okay, this doesn't matter. Save the game. You're right. Oh, you're so right. What a fucking shout. Someone VIP that guy. Call for donations to help Chuck Brody. Here we go. Former Gallows High football captain Chuck Brody suffered a career-ending injury as a victim of the festival disaster. Oh, this was last year. Tub on his road to recovery. We are buying him a lottery ticket. Hopefully, he gets lucky and can get back on his feet. Pun not intended. Drop tickets in the bucket below. Thanks. So, he's in the hospital. I think Chuck should be in the hospital. But that was last year. A whole year? Well, he broke his leg, eh? Yeah. Brody's not going to be walking for a while. Chuck, hospital. Uh, Big Will breaks free. 15 injured. Who is to blame? Gallows Creek uh, Harvest Festival. So this is the one with Chuck, eh? Flu for thoughts. Local Dr. K. Walker, Kim Walker, recommends all locals get their flu shot ASAP. Flu season is upon us. 84 It's no, is no difference to any other year. Please make sure you are protected. Um, I guess hospital too? Wait. Were these lined up next to the... Yo, did I just move everything around? Was there an order to this? Swear. So, Aunt Williams is... Oh, my lord. And here I thought I was cooking. Wow, that's a lot easier. So, these are what we know with these people. These are what we don't know with these people. Yeah, yep, disaster. He's in the hospital. Yep, hospital right here. Yep. Okay, I see. All these correlate with that. Staff surge at power station. Gallows Creek Power Station hires 20 new staff and record hire. 12 of which were... Okay, so then... Who's this guy? Ant? Little dork? Dweeb? Is at the power station. Hey, very good job, actually. Good on him. I think Kim is part of the trailer people. Because they say people are treating her like a celebrity. And she's an improv class. I'm sick of being a local celebrity. People are so mean to me. But why is there four options and four people? Why is there four, four locations of four people? Is Kim Hospital? Let's see, maybe. Quiet Ridge Health and Safety Con Convention. Uh, do you care about health and safety? Good, then come down to the yearly convention. Get started in our, get started in a career in a, Yeah, okay, she is hospital. Learn about health and safety in the workspace. Featuring special mystery guest. The lead engineer responsible for the Gallows Creek Harvest Festival Design. <laughs> wow. They say you learn from mistakes while I turn mine into career. Jesus. I think she is hospital. So they're both hospital? <sighs> they're both hospital? 24 rest? Inside Informer walks free. Sick of being a local celebrity. If she was the improv club, she would love being a celebrity. Oh, okay. Local legend takes to Manhattan. She stole her cars and then she stole her time and our money. To the interviewer, Jim Randy, last year. What if he's getting all this fame because of his injured leg? He's tired of being the center of attention because of his injury. So he's trying to move. So therefore, he's at the trailer park. Chuck Brody's at the park. Kim is at the hospital. Right? Right? 24-hour gas station bought by local ex-lottery winner. Wait. Or is he at the gas station? They gave him, they gave him lottery tickets. Christine's gas repair has been sold to a man who won the lottery 14 years ago. The new owner's claims it will keep me busy on an evening. He has asked to remain anonymous. What the fuck? Failed to stop and crash into a fuel tank. The seas have been identified as Gallows Creek locals. Mr. D. Rudd, Mr. Houghton, Mr. Stein, Mrs. Stein, and please have asked to privacy. <gasps> Ants? Wait, no. Power station. Wait. That's everything. But how does Rebecca own a gas station? Did she write this? I'm only confused about Chuck and Rebecca. Everything else makes sense. Marriage announcements? We would like to celebrate the marriage of Kim Walker and Peter Stein on May 30th, 1970. Okay, is there anything about Peter Stein? Where's the where's the gas station? I asked to remain anonymous. Matthew's one says it's looking for his behavior of multiple car thieves. So we stop the case to be that we must work together. Local legend if you miss author diary of a car thief moves out. He stole she she stole our cars and then she stole our money. So the interviewer Jim Randy last year. She I think it's the other way around. 
he leaves from the trailer park all the tickets they got him he won the lottery bought a gas station and she was the one stealing from the trailer park all their cars he owns a power plant obviously with his career choice wait no no car club i think this might be it though yeah no this makes sense this makes sense this has to be it gas station hospital trailer park power station this has to be it chuck sales is trailer park Tired of being a fucking local celebrity, wins the money from all the lottery tickets that they got him, buys a gas station. Kim, over here promoting all these things. So she works at the hospital. Rebecca is a car person. She stole the cars from the trailer park. And then the last one's power station. This has to be it. This has to be it. This has to be. I'm, I'm confident. How do I know I'm ready? How's it going? I think I'm good. I'm ready. I'm confident. A good 70% confident. Peggy? Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. Peggy, I'm ready as I'll ever be, okay? I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name Don't first. question me. Who do you think the target is? Wait, 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 what? Aren't they all targets? Yo. Yo, 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 yo. What, 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 what do we... All of them. No? Who would be the potential target for Clive? Maybe Rebecca. He hates people pranking him and messing with his town. She went around committing car thieves. She was a car theft. She, she kept stealing cars. He was injured. It wasn't his fault. She's trying to help everybody and he's at a power station. I think Rebecca Allen. I mean, I know who's at where, but what the fuck? How do we know what the next target is? The lead engineer is responsible for the Gallo Creeks. They say you learn from mistakes of why I turned mine into a career. Maybe he? Maybe Aunt Williams. Aunt Williams ruined the festival. And he got a career out of power station from, from trying to fix it again. This is blame two engineers that were contracted in the local power station. Aunt Williams and junior engineer Sean Everett were distracted uh, talking about horror movies while assembling the Big Will, which led to various construction mistakes. Maybe the person wearing the mask has someone they cared about on the Ferris wheel, multiple casualties. He was related to that person. Now he wants revenge on Aunt Williams. I think it's Aunt Williams. Aunt Williams. And where will I find them? At the power station. The power station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. <sighs> All right. All right. Let's fucking lock it in. I need this blanket right now. My blanket of affirmations. I need to wrap myself in this. I'm not fucking G. I'm confident by my fucking decision making. Moment. Forrest, I'm through to the power plant, but they say there isn't anyone by that name there. What? Then who? Ah! Jeez! It sounds like something blew up! Gas station! He's using bombs now? Oh my god. The call board. It. I. One moment. Forrest, I'm getting so many calls. Just let me. This is too I'm hard. Take us off I'm air just for a, a radio host. <sighs> nope. Hell no. Nope. Let's run it back from the top. Chuck? Why would Chuck. Why would he want to kill Chuck? I don't know, man. I really don't know. Chuck wasn't injured at the Ferris wheel. He was injured at a game. He caused the injury. But he's not at the power station. Aunt Williams doesn't work at the power station. Rebecca works at the hospital. I mean, Kim works at the hospital. That's a given. Easier prey then, but why? Why would he want to kill Chuck? I thought he wants to go out. I, I thought he has an actual motive. He let Carrie stay alive and for what? Kim has to be at the hospital. Is it really Chuck? Listen, back in the day, you're a quarterback. You get all this praise. Maybe he was bullied by Chuck. Maybe it's Chuck. Maybe he bullied him in high school. I mean, it has to be because it gas. There was a there was an explosion. He's asked to remain anonymous. Uh, I'm gonna guess Chuck, man. Maybe he was like a, a jock in high school, bullied the guy. Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? The gas station. Was... Okay, I'm dialing. Holy One moment. Fuck, this is ridiculous, bro. Oh, Chuck Brody. Listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the whistling man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. The whistling man? Who the hell are you? Bro, just listen, dog. Oh, Hurry the man. fuck up. This is Forrest Nash. Listen, the whistling man's back. We found a list with your name on it and... Oh, God. It, it's today.
day. Sajib, I finally let myself forget. I. What'd you do to him today? It's today. What 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 happened today? Today. The day of what? Uh, I think he ran off. Coward. Well, fingers crossed that Chuck. <laughs> Jeez! It sounds like something blew up. He's using bombs now? I. I. Is Chuck? I don't know. Hang on. We're getting a call. Gross battled. Hello? Chuck? Chuck! Force! The whole goddamn gas station's got up. At least they're gone. Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. The town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Yeah. Damn it. That fireball threw me. I've got to get to the hospital. Yikes. I'm not feeling great. Forrest, man. I can't thank you enough, but yeah, I gotta go. Wait, what? I... Damn it. We lost him. What was that about today? Oh, Forrest, the call board is lighting up. Get us into some music while I deal with this. Okay. Let's blow this up! Careful with this next track, listeners. It's dynamite. Forrest! My fault. There's gotta be more in the basement to show us who Clyde is. Yes, I agree. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. We? By we, you, you mean, mean me, yeah, on God. Right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these <sighs> all right. calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. All right. Hmm. The key. Was this always here? Oh, we picked it up last time. I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. Yo. Who's more dumb, me or this fucking character? Oh. Th I guess I am. Okay. Jesus! I some warning before yelling down the intercom. Oh God, yo, I hear you, I hear you. Hello. When you find something and want to discuss it. Okay. Radios. There's a battery on the shelf. What's in this room? Oh, hello. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. A map. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Map. Uh, a map of what? This map? No, he said the storage area. This is the map. All right, I guess. Who's that? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. Will do. So everybody thought it was George that died and drowned? Did Clive use George as bait to fake his own death? Ah, there it is. There's the map. That's what we're looking for. A tape and a book. Next door. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. Okay, and that puss. George Barrow, down of drown, da down of drown, died of drowning. Jesus Christ! Everybody's saying save. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay. George Barrow died from drowning after drinking. Deceased for five hours. Hold on. Put this down. We don't need you anymore. This is over here. There it is. Okay. Put this down too. Another tape. 
Also, oh my fucking god, dude. You can't you can't just be making a fucking earthquake in my room. This looks useful. Autopsy report, what is this? Sheriff Matthews, he's the one that covered this. Compliance name, Miss Sandra Sharp. Miss Sandra, why does it sound familiar? At 4 a.m., a call is received from a jogger. Oh, the, the jazz girl. Miss Sandra Sharp reporting that a body had been found washed up in the reservoir. I drove up to investigate. Anybody that was related to George's death is a is wanted. Uh, I drove to Viscay and was able to identify the body at the scene as that of George Barrow. I contacted the coroner's office and then the boy's parents. They informed me that they had not seen him since 7 p.m. on the 2nd. Not cleared. Supervising Officer Jay Matthews. Yeah, what about the kid in the maze? Right? Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. Typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering to the feet. As though the deceased had been running without stopping. He was running from somebody. He wasn't drunk and drowned. Maybe the whistling man was trying to kill George Barrow. Failed, he escapes, but doubt died drowning. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. So he wasn't drunk. A high amount of cortisol was found. Indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. Yeah, so this is a cover-up. Everybody was trying to cover up his death. For what? Why? This autopsy report says every just tells the whole story. Where's the next one? Near a fan. Additionally. There appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. It looks like it was trapped in a car door. Trapped in a car door? Was there a picture over here? No, there wasn't. No, there is. This is so confusing. I'm so it sorry. Important. I made you do this, Virginia? Virginia? That's the girl we, we failed to save. The sees a Caucasian male, age 18. The cause of death is established to be drowning as shown by the signs of whatever. Aberrations was found on his knuckles, likely from getting into fights in the past. Matches with known history of the seas being aggressive. No other injuries are observed, and from the coroner's opinion, there is no evidence of foul play. Additionally, the preliminary toxic. She tinkered it. She made it seem like he was a drunkie that liked to get a lot into a lot of fights and then drowned to death. But why? Why did Clive, if Clive's a whistling man, why did he kill her if she was helping him? Is Clive the killer? It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, resulting in yeah, maybe he thought she was ratting. into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and drowned. Following that, he was moved. Drop us off. We need to have a talk. That sounds like Clive. That sounds like Clive. George Barrow. But did George Barrow know Rebecca, Chuck, Kim, and everybody? Did he know everybody? How does this all court? Ooh, a new vinyl for my collection. Nice. Last tape. If you're listening to this, then what? What? I'm a man who likes to stay informed. Saving. Sorry, ruining the immersion. I've got subscriptions to newspapers all over the country. A few weeks ago, I noticed headlines cropping up in those papers. Explains the board, the room. Other. Each headline about a murder. Each murder, the death of someone I knew. It's not Clive. Clive is not the killer. Most Clive was the guy at the beginning. Clive is already dead. We played as Clive at the beginning. They tried covering up George Barrow's death. Someone related to George Barrow didn't like that? One, drawing closer to Gallows Creek. Drawing closer to the anniversary. None of us are innocent. But I, I knew it. They all have a reason to George Barrow's death. And the guy killing it killing all these people that knew George Barrow thinks he was they were in on his death deserve killing all i hope now is that i can save some folk from the worst that i can 
Poor Clive, yo. God. What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. But why did Jimmy die? Why was he about to kill the kid at the maze? It still doesn't make sense. There's still so many stuff. That just doesn't make sense. I'm I'm kind of sus of Peggy too. There's no way she's not involved in some sort of way. It's a small town. Everybody knows each other. She's familiar with everybody's name. What have you found, Forrest? It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. George, he was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice. I'm, I knew it. It was Kim. No, Virginia was the, the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Yes. Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape. It talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life, sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. She, I beg you. I don't know, dude. Newspaper and everything. I found a written autopsy report. What does it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. Yep. But that contradicts the tape. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with the report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Wait, the call She's dead. earlier. When we had to call the takeout restaurants, wasn't her name Virginia? Wow, the... Biggest fucking key factor we need is she's dead. <sighs> if only she had made it. Then we might have learned more about what's going on. It's okay. We did what we could. We lost the most the crucial person. Was a long shot as it was. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah. Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. Hmm. The written report I found doesn't mention it at all. How did his arm get trapped in a car door after he died? Unless he got it when the police collected his body. Maybe. That's kind of a stretch, else though. must have moved him after he was dead to... The closing your door? Was eventually found. On a dead but body? What is going on here? Yeah, they should have added that to the report. The police report mentions a friend from earlier. Sandra Sharp. Sandra. The jazz runner. The jazz runner? That's right. She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? Yeah? What's strange about that? George got cuts from running through foliage, right? But there's no forest around there. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? Reservoirs don't have tides. But that's what the police report said. It's not possible, though. Yeah. I did a school project on reservoirs and got a Shit, his body should have sank to the but, bottom. Yeah. Not important right now. Is he alive? Is George alive? They were doing a prank on George. No. The important thing is that it doesn't make sense. What are you suggesting then? That the body was originally found somewhere other than what the report suggests. That the sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Something like that. Yeah. I think. Well, Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. True. But Sandra is still alive? True. Once we're done down here, we should give her a call. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? No. Maybe? But then there's this next bit, where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. So she agrees with us? Yeah. 
At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I, I think it was Clive. This is starting to make sense now. This, this is a conspiracy to cover up what happened to George. We know that. Yeah, but how did he end I think up like I found that? Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession, not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You... Do you think the Whistling Man already got him? Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. Dude, Clive literally Correct. just died this night. Dark. I know. Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident. Yep. And the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. Yep. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was checking out to save them. He was tracking them down to save them. Ugh, why didn't he just come out with all of this? Uh, and that put himself he in said danger. His employer threatened his family if yep. he spoke out about any of it. Orchestrated the cover up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you'd killed all those people. Do you think you found everything? Uh, I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. Yep. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Uh, yep. Come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. So we saved pretty much everybody. Well, except for, you know who. 3 a.m. Yo. 3 Thank God you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Holy hell! Radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really, how are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? And how are we supposed to figure out what's going on? Beats me. But we gotta do it and we're going to. <sighs> you're right. So, what's the plan now? Fuck if I know. <sighs> Where do we start? Well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Yeah? Do you want to call her? I do. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah, we need to ask her about finding yeah, the body. Yeah, because she found it. She was the one who discovered it, but something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder what she's hiding. Right? We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Uh. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully, she's at her jazz studio. Aha, uh. uh -huh. Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra. It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. <laughs> How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest, of course. Heck, okay. I you saved my life. I she seems easy going. About anything you asked. Should we just be straightforward? Why were you targeted? Or be a little, like, lenient, then make our way into being, you know, a good cop, bad cop? Let's smooth talk. Let's smooth talk here. Really? Well, that sounds nice. I might just call you Riz the answers out. Oh, you got my number. Want to doubt, Riz it out. But what about tonight? Is there anything you want to talk about right now? Remember why we called, Forrest. Gotcha. Of course. Do you know why the Whistling Man might have targeted you? Ha! Or like Adele. He was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. Right. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. Yep. People who hey, know jealous, huh? about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. So quick. You don't know anything about that. You found the body. It was in the report. Sandra, we know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. It's okay. It's okay, Sandra. We know. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Let's act course. like we know. This studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. Do you understand? Sure. 
Sure. I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything would be okay. The rent was low. She needed to act like she didn't see anything. So they paid her to be quiet. Maybe we say of course, and then maybe she'll say a name after that? Of course. We understand. I mean, it's not like I killed him. What was the harm in saying I found him in the reservoir instead of the river? Right? Right? I'm sorry. I can't do this. Yo, we gathered gone. nothing from that. I don't that. think that could have gone any better. Really? We truly did great for it. Swear. Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Hey, Big Shot, hit the button yeah, and yeah. take the call. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Boris. I know this is really out of the What's up, Ponty? Oh my god, Pizza? If you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. Now, really? You want to do that now? Really? Why? Of course, now. It's his birthday. I won't have a chance to do it again until next year. May as well, Forrest. Uh, fine. <laughs> Let's get on What's with his it. name. Thank you, Boris. He's my uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always has salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my God, damn it! Yes! Tell him he can oh. get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza. Starting at just ah! Stop calling us. God damn Hang it, up. Peggy. This is your fault. My fault? I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. Ah. Don't worry. We've already got another call All right, on the line. Alright, let's go with it. Just pick it up, okay? What do you? This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> Who is this? Caller. She's laughing. <sighs> Another prank caller. Run an ad, run an ad. Ponty. Ponty's Pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man. Ridiculous! This motherfucker! Bro, how many times? No, nah, fam. No, nah, fam. Forrest, are you okay? I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool, truly, I'm cool. Forrest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Jesus. Sorry, sorry, that was... That was too much. It's okay. It's been a high-stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call, whenever you're ready. I bet. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. Save your money, That's... truly. All I'm gonna say about that, moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who, may I say, is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. It's Don. Don. Ah. Uh, oh I yes, the record I'm player. Sorry, I didn't play your song. There's a lot going on, but please. I uh, never mind that now. First, I'm calling because I need your help. Okay. Are you in danger? Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Does it sound like him? You it? mean? Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. If it wasn't for her, we would have seen the room. She did help us find Clive's office in a sense. I'm just gonna say right. Right. Okay. Tell us everything. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Um, why would you want to go in a place where go go elsewhere? Ask a neighbor. Can a neighbor let you in? Uh, 
I only moved in last week. I don't, I don't like this girl. Yet. There's not even a buzzer here. Only the the keypad for the entry code. I need that code to get inside. And how am I Which gonna know it? Block? Do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment building between Town Hall and the Trailer Park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. Next to a train track. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't capture, wait. Max, not a dog person? Uh, I'm guessing you're not a dog person. No, I'm not. It's my neighbor's Dawn's dog. Dawn's the killer. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing and, oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any. He's coming down the street. For that security system where I'm gonna die. No, she needs the code to go inside and get Ricky. Hi. What's the neighbor's name? What's your neighbor's name? I don't know my neighbors, remember? Please, I need to get in. I don't think we're supposed to help her. Get the neighbor's attention. Can you if you can get hear the him. Neighbor's attention? That the whistling man will see me, Forrest. I can't do that. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says... Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six-digit number. Starling, huh? Starling Security 4000, huh? That's right. Very newly installed. I need the key code before the whistling man gets me. Yeah, of course. Don't worry. Don't. Yeah, no, there's no whistling either. He always Thank whistles. You, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. All right, folks, here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Dawn into her apartment. Yeah, break into her apartment. What a joke. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me or was there something? No, it wasn't just yeah, you. It wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah, well, tell you what, we have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well... I'm not sure who, but to help someone. Clive has it too. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. Woodside Apartments? She's completely lying to us. Clear as fuck, there's a train, dog, roller rickies. She needs to break through a security system to get into her own apartment? That's sketch as fuck. Order delivery form. Starling must have Fucking this by genius. Accident. It's crazy. The system's not even installed at Woodside. Unable to install. Require new parts. New installation date 17th of December. Of September. We caught you right-handed. Fess up, coward. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? Nothing by way of key codes. I see. Um, I mean, yeah, this is enough, no? Should we get more? Uh, any ideas? Any ideas, Peggy? Dawn says she's stuck outside the Woodside Apartments with the Whistling Man nearby. She's locked out because of some new security system. Yeah, the Starling 4000. Yeah. Right. And we had the same security system delivered here. Clive was going to install it, so check the basement. I guess that's where Clive would have stuff like no that. No shit, dude. Thanks, Peggy. No problem. Don't take too long. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? Nothing by way of Peggy, keyboards. you're sketching me out, I dog. See. I'm gonna be honest. I'll go back and look again. Don't be too long. Starling 4000, user manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starling 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller Ricky! I... Do you think we should give him a call? Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but... I think we should give him a call. But if we call him, Donald here, she's always listening to the radio. She's been using us for information this whole time. I don't think we should call him. Just put me through to Don. I'll take care of this one way or another. Okay. If you say so. When you're Shit. ready, shut the music off. Line one. Whenever you're ready. 
done. Are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code? I'm gonna give her. I'm gonna give her the wrong code. Alarm. I think we should do alarm test. The code is one nine one five. I'm gonna look at Peggy and see how she reacts. Thank you, Forrest. Right. You're welcome. I know it's you. Ricky should be Is out. She? She's breaking in, and for what? Yeah, stay out. Nobody disrespects. Oh, Ricky got that blinky! Ricky got that blinky! Don't ever come back here again. I'm calling the cops. Yep, Max. Thank God. Let him know. Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. That was the whistling man. I knew it. The alarm gave me just enough time I knew to get it. my rifle. Oh, my days. I don't like hurting folk, but I can't let anything happen to Maxie. He's my best friend, you know? Damn what? straight. Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. I'm gonna barricade that window. You have a gun. You're chilling. Thank you. Of course. Peggy can skate for free whenever you want. Forever. I'm That's there. A done deal. I thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. You got it. Talk to you soon. Okay. Why is she not more happy about that? Gallows Creek. Here's some music while we process what just happened. So the whistling man is a woman? I had my suspicions. Yeah, I worked it out a while ago. Yeah, I worked it out a while ago. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. Yeah. She called up. Because I'm sus of you, spoke too. To her multiple times. I thought she was just a regular Gallows Creek Strange. I knew she wasn't right. No, she, she's, yeah, exactly. She just it didn't seem right. Hello? Call it gut instinct. What can I say? I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? No. Nah. Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside to mess with us? Maybe she actually wanted it. To get me outside. To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. Because you planted it out there. There's no way Peggy's part of it. I don't want to believe that shit, yo. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have yo, new info. Yo, yo, okay, yo. Okay, you're live yo. in three, two... Hey, folks. This is Forrest Nash here. I hope... Yo, did she just give me the finger? You're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. Our neighbors, look out for each other and stay safe. I'm sad to say this, but it's time to trust no one. I'm sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. The killer was calling themselves Don. This could be a fake name. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's <laughs> 911. Hell yeah. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Okay. All right. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. Let's see. You're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, man. Murphy? What's up, Murphy? Hey, I'm straight. Hell What's yeah. Going on, Murphy? You in danger again? No, nah, man. I've just been listening to the show here at home. And With your son, huh? Ask folks to call in if they could help out. Well, I'm right gonna, on. Thank you, Murphy. I don't know if I can say as much as other folks have, but uh, I figure I wouldn't be a good role model to Fernando if I didn't try to help. You know? It's good on you. You're a good father. You're a good father, Murphy. Absolutely. Fernando's a lucky kid. Oh, thanks. So. Uh, what do you want to know? Well, what can you tell I got us? It. Uh, I don't know, really. All right. Well, do you know anything about the death of George Barrow? Absolutely nothing. Whoa, okay. Murphy. What about the killer herself? Herself? <laughs> Man, I, I didn't get my ass kicked by a lady. Hate to break Hell, it to I you. I went toe to toe 
it was a man, man. You heard the last call, right, Murphy? Yep. So you know it's a woman, and you were trained by a VHS, Murphy. I, I know, but... Man, how could it have been a woman under that mask? Two killers? Let's just move on. Do you know anything about the history of the Whistling Man? Two killers? No, sir. Tonight's the first time I ever heard of him. What? I moved here three years ago, man. What do you... So then why was he trying to kill Murphy? What for me? There's gotta be two killers. Maybe they're trying to sprinkle in some innocent people so we won't catch on to the whole George Burrow thing. No worries. Hey, man. No worries. Just thank you for trying. Yeah, throw people off the right. trail. Sorry I couldn't help you all more, man. Now, if you'd have asked me about Gator... Thanks, Murphy. Forrest, we have a call coming in. Sorry, Murphy. Next time. I think that's all we've got time Tend for Tend right to your now. son. Happy birthday once again. All right, all right. I'll catch you all with the Gator talk later. Now, <laughs> well, folks, Alligator. that was a bust. But perhaps our you want to see a bus? I'm shut. No, relax. Everybody, come down. Next caller has more they can tell. Lock it in. I can't. I can't get thrown off my mojo. Let's find out. Okay. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's 25 Nancy Drive. 25. Nancy. He's bleeding every. Nancy Drive. Nancy Drive. Nancy Drive. Nancy Drive. Nancy Drive. Nancy Drive. King Avenue, Bond Street. There, Nancy know, Drive. Please help me. What happened? Somebody's been stabbed. Can, can you tell me what happened? Right, let me save. You're so right. All my days. We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. He just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that. And I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh, no. Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person, and they just stabbed him. So he knew about it. He was in on it? Interesting. We can ask, was it a woman? Let's not say the whistleman. Was it a woman? Casey, was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They had a mask and wore all black. Okay. That's all I know. Please, we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know, where did the masked person go? They left! They left him to bleed out! I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. The garage? What garage? What? Why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, it's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but... Please! How can you not tell if it was... He needs to get to the hospital. I can't drive, so we need an ambulance. There's no more ambulances. Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. We need to know what his name is. What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason. Jason Parker. Who is Jason Parker? Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach, and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground, and it's... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. I know, but please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him. I don't like this. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Nope. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? No much choice. We don't really have much choice. Hit me. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, 
Get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Sit them up. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. She, she forgot think. a step. Oh, no. Get them comfortable. Yeah, apply pressure. When it's bleeding slows down, get cloth and apply more pressure to it. You said he was stabbed, right? That the object he was stabbed with is still in him? Don't take it So his it leg. Out. Don't take it. Don't take the knife out of his leg. the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. Yep, that's coming out. I wouldn't have thought of that. God, Jesus, that Peggy, you're a info. fucking anchor. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far because there's more to go. Huh? I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. Okay. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Move blood from the legs into his organs. Try to keep him warm. Get keep him, him warm. to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, okay. Don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. I got it. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. This guy. We need we need him to stay alive. We need Jason Parker. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. Hello? Hello? Forrest, are you there? <sighs> How is Jason? I'm here. How is Jason doing? He's still bleeding. Okay. I need help. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. That's but good. He's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? Leave it in there. It's gotta be hell. Should I? No. Bleed? Don't touch the knife. Don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making. Some pull yourself together. Stay with me, Casey. No. I I have a fucking PhD. To my it's right there. It's right there. Don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get. Someone tells me that you jar your spit and trade it for toenails. This is true. Someone banned that guy. Jason threw this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse though. Okay, sit him up. We need to secure the knife. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. Perfect. Some laundry piled up on Keep top it of the firmly in there. If bro is passed out, even better. What else? I guess I've got my jacket. Grab all of that. We need to clean your rags for the wound. Jacket to keep him warm. We need to use the laundry. Bingo. Look in the laundry for something like a towel or a shirt. Hold that over the wound. Okay. Looks like I'm gonna have to buy you some new whites, Jason. Here we His go. tiny whiteies. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. Stay Jason. with us. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Now? Now isn't the best time, Peggy. Can it wait? Forrest, it's kind of important. All right. Give me a second. She's stalling. She's stalling. Why? In the middle of a fucking procedure. Who does that? Casey, I'm going to have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. What is this? Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. She'll have to drive him? Could anybody... Could somebody nearby help? Could somebody nearby help them? Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I... never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah? Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. 
Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems. Problems on problems on problems on problems. With that. Naturally. Naturally. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. So then this. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. Maybe there 1034. Is something else. I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that oh, have I forgot we're in the 80s. You put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. Jesus. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. That is good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. Yeah, dude's You'll bleeding out. He's friend. definitely okay. I'll Jesus just slide Christ. I'll under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. <sighs> I just have to look around. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. It's a lounge. Private. There we go. Looks like I need a four-digit code. Very important date. 1987. First date to the injured. Scott. So Scott's our guy. Scott's easily our guy then, no? 1987. The bite of 87? Remember Reggie's Junior's birthday. 09, not 1009. So 0910. Nope. That's not working. Must be something else. So it's not his son's birthday. That's crazy. Axe forever. Need to write pitch documents. Good title. Bring back original protag and villain. Clive, you're reading this. Stop stealing my post notes. A floppy disk. Could this be it? Pizza delivery killer who kills with a pizza cutter. Free slice on meme. Terrifyingly, there is never any pizza. What happened to the original delivery guy? Maybe write him in the final girl's boyfriend? Protagonist is a college student, Megan. She's smart, beautiful, resourceful, and lactose intolerant. Amplify what the fuck am I reading? Is this FNAF lore? No way. No way he... Nice! Your kid's birthday. Okay. Carter Bradley? Who's that? As soon as we put him... Oh, he's a food critic. Oh, Bradley. He's the one that got along with Barbara, the receptionist. Hedges, John, Lawson, Karen. There's the intern. Barbara. Hedges, John. We don't have... We don't have Scott. Scott is Reggie. Oh. Simone, she has fully taken on Hamas show alongside. Karen has started mentoring Peggy. I think this will be really good for Peggy. They're even doing team building, training getaways to improve efficiency. I'm sorry to suspect that these producer training getaways are being strate strategically timed. But now, both miss Secret Santa. First aid training and Teddy Gallo's junior station visits. John refused to engage with the first aid trainer during the course. I know he's a war medic. Oh, this guy's the fucking... He's the guy then. He's the guy. I had a bunch of medical equipment in his home that he pro he procured the military at the, at the end of his service. Is that legal? Do I need to report him? Spoke to John again about eating the free samples. Goo goo gaga. It's John. Hey, Peggy. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right. Good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please pick up. Is this the new Casey, producer? Got I'm you. here. What's wrong? Save! Trying to get the rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What do I do? Wait, wait, what? He's probably going to shock. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the police seem to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. No, that means there's not, Casey, not enough blood. Not you enough blood going to his organs. Right. I, we have to lift his legs. I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do 
do about shock? Elevate Jason's legs. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. She's putting him in missionary! Okay. I propped his legs up on some boxes. I'm looking at my notes. We need to get Jason as warm True. and comfortable as possible. Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? The jacket. She yes. had a jacket. I still have some laundry next to me. I'll wrap him in some blankets. That works too. Just give me a second. <sighs> sorry, sorry. Jason's bleeding through his bandages. Sh should I get him new ones? Or. Yes. Oh, Put some more. Apply an additional bandage. Don't remove the bandage. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I've used the rest of the laundry to keep him warm, so I'll use my jacket. I can always get a new one. Okay. I'll fix his bandage. And get That's him better. Warm. Hold on, please. Jacket's pretty thick. You're doing good, Casey. Relax. You're gonna be fine. You want to say that? Jason is going to be fine. I know, right? So what happens to the clean rags? Hello? We're like, clean rags? What happened? Hello? Just make sure he knows he's gonna be okay. Okay? Okay. But please, I can't give him what he needs. The rags are not dirty. The rags are not dirty, guys. All right, Forrest. We need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. You said you knew who to call earlier? Who was it? John Hedge! We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's Perfect. probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. Oh, war oh they were cleaning rags. Oh! What the? Anyways. Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, Stupid. John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. It's something Perfect. All right. What's his number? Uh, 5420735. Calling now. Let's hope he picks. Who the hell is this calling you? Damn. What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Chill. No, this is someone's been stabbed. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man. Or, never mind. He's lost a lot of blood and he's passed out. We need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is gonna die if we don't help him right now. Seriously? Huh? Yes. Lock it in. Called on for over ten years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at twenty-five Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. Oh yeah, John. I know you're on your way. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak and then just started thrashing. What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. Holy hell. You're going to be just fine. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Come on. Whoa, Casey. John Hedges. Well, damn! Please let me in. I'm guessing that's Jason there. No. Casey, I'm gonna need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this from here. Okay. Forrest, we'll call you back later. I have to go now. Good luck, everyone. God, I hope he's gonna be all right. Whew. And with that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. All right. Holy hell. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. Know what I'm saying? 
You'll like this next song. It's getting pretty late. No. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. We're almost done. When you want to go back on air. Jesus Christ, I'm tired. I need some coffee. No, I need some G subs. Can we join a checkout? All right, let's do it. This game is so good, man. I can't. I can't. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through too. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Right away. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Forrest, it's me. Hey! Oh, hey, Maxie's here too. Hell yeah. Good to hear from you. Good to hear from you again. How are you both doing? Oh, uh, we're good, man. Thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. That wouldn't be a bad look for you, Forrest. Right? A little white wing halo number. What can I Maybe say? Maybe something for the KFAM Halloween party. All right, everyone, let's calm down. Ricky, I'm just glad we could help you and Maxi. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Really? Oh, what's that? You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. Okay. He's a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Chuck. Ricky, they called me. All right, and what is? He was part of the football runner Ricky. What does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team too. Tell me about him. Tell me about him. What was George like? I didn't know him for long, man. Sad to say, we had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. And the killer? Dawn tried to kill him when he barely even knew the guy? Crazy Ricky, motives. Were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. His girl. I knew it. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? Enough to kill. Do I just outright say it, Dawn? I'm gonna say, tell me about her. Ricky, listen, this is very important. I need to know everything about her. I didn't really know her before or see her after that. I never even got her name, man. Well, I just remember he called her Bean. Then what did she look like? Please tell us anything you remember. I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were just having a good time. And then the next thing I knew, Everyone was running for their life. What? I looked up and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. And... And I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? It was all a prank. But George got so scared when he was running through the forest, he scraped himself up. And then once he died, once they tried to... These weren't like... You know, your common killer. So when they try putting him away, they close the door on his arm. I think that's what it is. I think this is a whole prank. Somebody was pranking him. That's why she stabbed Jason. Because what if Jason was the guy in the mask? That the whistling man. And that's why she's saying it's a prank that's gone to. Yeah, a prank gone wrong. She's just getting revenge. He was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. It wasn't your fault, man. Ricky, it wasn't your fault. You're not a bad person. I know that now, ma'am. It took a long time to learn, but... Just wrong place, wrong time. That's all it yeah. is. Just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, man. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Maxie to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening, man. I'll let you to it. Oh! Night, and that's exactly why she doesn't like pranksters. That's why she killed Jimmy. Because Jimmy was in on with the mask bit that almost got someone else killed. That's why she killed Jimmy. Because the same thing happened to her boyfriend. When they were pranking right, George, he died. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. Come on! If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then... She's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in, but hang on. What's up, Peggy? Yo. 
Peggy? What's going on? You're gonna want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another try. Why is she so Here's excited by it? To help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. She's so happy for what? Hello? Forrest, I'm glad I got back through to you. Leslie! Oh! Looks like it's been a busy night, huh? Super! Surprise! It's Leslie, our oh my God. operator. Oh my God! The charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy to have you too. I... Wait, Sarah? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. Uh, anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago. We've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through until now. It's been a long night. Ever since you found Sheriff Matthews, it's only gotten worse. It's been a long night. Well, it shouldn't be too much longer now. Glad I got through to you. I wanted to let you all know what's going on. I made it to Henderson. And maybe the reason why a family paid Clive to hide this because they didn't want their son or daughter to get in trouble for what they did during the prank. And that's why they asked the sheriff to tinker or somebody to tinker with an autopsy report. Ah. Turns out somebody had cut Because the they didn't want their children's no life to get After I told ruined. Them, well, their sheriff sent a goddamn squad back with me to stop this. That's great news. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. What do you need? You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. True. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in. So once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this night. Got you. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Boris Nash's interview of a lifetime. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Sounds good. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. Ah, this makes sense. Since Brody was a superstar talent, his parents wanted to cover it up. Gotcha. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. Hope you're right. I hope you're right. The sooner this is over, the better. If Peggy's in on this, though, that's going to be an issue. But I don't think she is anymore. I am right. Trust me. Anyway, we should get you back on air. Taking callers is the only way to see this through. When you're ready, shut the music off. Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. Oh, uh, hey. I'm Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John, is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. Hell yeah. I've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. Well, yeah, he was the fucking the best the offense hospital. line there was Thank in high school, you apparently. So much. If you hadn't been there, then. God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? What? Is this Forrest? Yo, what's what? up? The one and only. The one and only. I hope you're feeling better. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach. And there's a knife in my leg. But John gave me something to take the edge. Ah, of. some good old morphine. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> <coughs> take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But uh before that I I needed to call you. What's up? I'm guessing the 
whistling man is still out there? This is true. Yeah. Yep. As far as we know, anyway. Well, I was worried you'd say that. God damn it. Actually, I'm glad you called. I wanted to talk to you about what happened earlier. True. Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is He's alright. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right She's back. She's so iffy. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? That it would have Dawn's calling her. Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail. For a long time, it was hell. And then the town just moved on. Like it never existed. What happened? What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Knew it. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. We decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. Yikes. And now he's party actually stabbed. Wow. That night, I left the group for a second. Met our whistling man. Pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone. Started an almighty panic. Those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean? Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Dawn. Her name was... What? What happened? Are we still on air? Yo. No, no we're not. Seems like the power is completely gone. How do we get it back on? Nah, no way. Uh, M, M. Yeah, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Ricky picked it up a while ago. Marie Camp... An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attack, broadcasting a serial killer's location to the cops so we can end this nightmare? Fair point! It's in the storage area in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. Oh, see you when you're back. Wasn't that Peggy's last name? And then they got remarried. I think the person that called her was... Marie, I think her sister. Pretty sure her sister called her. There's still a lot of theories. There's still a lot of what ifs. I know, bro. I'm checking every fucking corner. Far back corner. Why is this station so big? Far back corner. This seems like, oh my god. I feel like I'm about to sneak past somebody. Far back corner over here? That's it. That must be it. Oh, brother. This story just keeps getting better and better. Boom! We've got power. I knew it. The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Yeah, there's a kill no loose. Let's just not bring a weapon with us, huh? Like, we're so smart, man. Holy hell. Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy? I need to get back upstairs. Peggy's in on it. I understand. Do anything for your family but fuck man did you love george like that too come on we're good we're cool we're cool she wouldn't kill her own <laughs> oh! what was that they're sisters right she wouldn't kill her sister unless she pretends that she's dead just like back then yo what why is it locked why is that locked oh no peggy's not here Peggy, where'd you go? Yo! Nah, fam. No way. 
This can't be happening. Oh, no. Nah. A, a call. Where's Peggy? Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. Go. It can be Peggy. There's no way that's Peggy. Old time still. So let's make the most of it. What do you mean? Make the most of it. Oh, how? but that is someone who knows how to use the air room. Well, obviously, because Peggy... I, so Peggy is on it. But I don't think that's Peggy specifically. Well... Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Bro, Brody Gallo? Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But he made you crawl out of his coffin with all the money in the world. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well, he knows he'll get it. We gotta stall. We gotta stall. Then who's here? Wait, then... Who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Your son? Your son? You mean you... Wait, the... But he... Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. So there were two whistling men. So there was two. Of course. That explains how you were always yep. able to get around town so quickly. And that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper office. Don't think I've forgotten about that, Forrest. Locking my sweet boy away like an animal. And Murphy, he he was right, wasn't he? He didn't find he a man. He did fight a man. Oh, well, he did, he yes. Did. I taught my boy to never run away from a fight. Hang on. Did you say Barrel? That are you? Let me just get this mask off. Marie. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. Mooney. <sighs> there we go. Marie. Marie Campbell. Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Oh. Well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Not done, huh? We gotta stall. We gotta stall. Marie Campbell. So, not Don, huh? No. Not Don. What are you going to- uh, uh. Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. For the cops what to show up. You- ah. You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest- I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Why should I? But where's Peggy? Why should I help you? Why, why should I play any part in this? Because I think you believe in justice. You think this? This is, is justice? not justice. You have no goddamn idea, Forrest. These people, these people you've been trying to save, they were all in on it. They all knew George was murdered, but. Murdered? Uh, listen. I... Damn! Damn! She's I Batman, bro. Speak when you're spoken to. Now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. Yeah. And that's why I want you to interview us. Are you serious? Are you serious? You, you want me to interview you? Am I serious? After everything tonight, you really have to ask me if I'm serious. Uh... Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek. And if I can find... 
So is this Peggy's sister? Find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Hit him, Marie? Jesus Christ. Be honest, Teddy. Teddy, be honest with me or we're both going to die. Honest? Forrest, I'm trapped here with a psycho. <coughs> wow. What the hell? <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guy. The night Mooney vanished? Tell me why that night. We want to act like we know nothing about Whistling Night. Tell me why that night. What made that night special? That was the night Mooney went missing. We couldn't pass it up. I was just surprised no one had ever thought to do it before. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God. Who was there? Me, Jason, okay. and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. This story's I so good, dude. Bottle, you know, because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people I do. still hate Teddy, though. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. So, I helped him keep himself together. You... You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? That's right! Talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw... Jason there. Bloody. Like, he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man. <laughs> Screaming. George and I, and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. Did you ask Ricky? He didn't know the plan. He just ran. He was scared for his life. Did you ask Ricky? That's it. That's the fucking way to go. Did you ask Ricky if he knew or not? I didn't see any reason to. Why? Because Ricky phoned up earlier. He didn't know anything about it, Marie. What? He had no idea what was Weren't you listening, Jackass? Was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. There you go. Well, it doesn't matter. It does matter, because your justice almost got an innocent person killed. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. Just a prank? That's too sudden. That's too sudden. Stall out with a question. How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on. I... Oh, God damn it. You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? Right? That's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He sure is. Friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding. And... You're going in. And him professional help just in time. Oh. the good sense to die earlier he's gonna regret that right enough about him he and george took off running but somehow we got separated in the woods i ended up near the bottom of whistling point and when i noticed george wasn't with me i panicked and then i don't know how he snuck up on me but the whistling man grabs me i scream and he starts laughing telling me it's it's just a joke. And that's why Marie I killed Jimmy. I'm here. Who was it? We can ask who it was, but that'll be a sudden question. What happened next? Maybe how did you feel? How did you feel? She's emotional. Let's play into her emotions and make her long on how it made her feel. In that moment. I felt like nothing was real. 
Then she'll tell us who it was after all this. What happened next? Tell me what happened next. I suddenly recognized it was Chuck. Chuck Brody. Chuck. Laughing away. That explains why she wants to kill him at the gas station. What was he looking at? <laughs> was George? Better. What happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just Teddy. George. I knew it. Fell off Whistling Point. Why did he fall? How do you know? Where were you? How do you know? I think where were you? Confused. Tell him where. He, ask him where he was at and how he got to the point. I think this is the best. Where were you when it happened? I. Uh, up there you were dressed as the whistling man too and that's why she has two whistling men's there was a double whistling man that night i didn't push him god damn it i just chased him up there and he kept backing up when i saw he was about to go over i reached out that's what you saw you liar it's not my fault he didn't know it was a joke yo if he'd had any brain. Oh, shut the hell up, Teddy. No, I hit him. He would have realized. <laughs> Good. You bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all, you did. Maybe a little bit of justice. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind if Teddy dies. I believe her. Then why the cover up? Even if you didn't push him, then why the cover up? If she's lying, why the cover up? There you go. Bye. There you go. He was a quarterback. The star quarterback of high school. People like us are bragged for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, of course. He had power to pay the city to shut up. And then, who knows? This guy got mad with power. He got away that one night and thinks he'd get away with everything. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out there you to go. clean it up. Why should a blip ruin That's all his life was to you? George was a blip? He wasn't a blip, Marie. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night. And the Sandra cop was dirty enough to hide it. Morning, while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up. And she... Teddy paid her off. Teddy, unless she kept quiet. Did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp. This fucking dude. Is that a yes? I take it that's a yes. Yes. Okay. We own most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless, unless she stayed quiet. She lied and said she found him in the. She almost killed another innocent person river. instead of asking what herself. My father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but. Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the not everyone. Wrote a fake report said George was drinking. Just got himself into trouble and I saw. I'm I'm sorry. If Dr. Sullivan had survived, then maybe There's no excuse for what she did, Forrest. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper. But no, yeah, but you shouldn't take money. You shouldn't take money. We'll take care of Maurice Russell later. But I was trying to sympathize with her and then have this conversation keep going. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. But this isn't the God, way to no go idea. about it. It's never started. He shouldn't have pushed my George off the cliff. He should have been punished. But he's coming to a stop. Leslie, where are you? Here. Where George and I first met. Which is? Which is? Was right after he shot the The high girl. school. Wait a sec. The football field. 
You're at the football field. Jesus Christ! Forrest, you idiot! What? We're in the gym at Gallows Creek High! I told you not to do that. Wait! <laughs> He's... dead too now, isn't he? He is. Anyway... Gallows Creek High, in the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. Not that it matters, but yes, we're here. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So... Boom! Marie? Where? Oh my god. Peggy! Teddy? You've got to help me. I... Quiet. You'll talk more later. Now I have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy. It's been so long so they are since I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. Marie! Oh my god! I thought you... And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Sister? sister. Peggy, wh what's happening? Why are you even there? Wanna explain, Peggy? Earlier... While you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Yeah. Well, it was from Dawn. And you went? She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out. That my sister is the whistling man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? Oh god. She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged my dad to do something about what happened that night, but did they care? <sighs> Jesus Christ. Let me shut up. No, I don't need to stay quiet. I only care when they've learned I've been with George. And... And... Uh, Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's Mom and Dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well... I'll have to settle for the next best thing. There we go. Is that why you attacked Eugene? I... Uh, wait. Is that why you went after that kid in the maze maze? Uh, Eugene Stein? Because... His parents died? Eugene? Last name is Stein. That's his parents? That's right. Eugene's parents were there that night too. But they got themselves killed in a bus accident. And since only their child was left... That is crazy! You forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. Is there any way I could prove that he didn't forget Marie? How? How? It hurt to be forgotten. The song. I forgot you. Well, no one's gonna forget now. I I tried picking that up. Why did it not let me pick it up? I tried picking it up. Why why did it not let me pick it up? Is there any way I could prove Peggy didn't forget Marie? Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She she kept it here on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I. Well, I. Anderson Police! Free! No! You do it, time! Get out of there! Blast his ass! I don't give a fuck! We have two wounded and we're in pursuit of the suspect. Anderson Police! Freeze! I'm innocent! Forrest! Leslie, how's Peggy? Cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. God, Marie. Hey, Zara. I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now, we got here 
here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. What a good it's story, dude. Thank God it's over. <sighs> and we're on air. Well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This has been... Force, Force Nash. Nash. It's been a scream. And it's been... A scream. Damn. Okay, Forrest? Okay? Yikes. But look how much people we saved, yo. What is this? Are we? Are we the sun now? Never mind. What an amazing game, dude. Oh my god. Took a while to get into it, but my god. She went back to where George died. Almost poetic. She might. That's crazy. Dude, this game, man. Did she survive? No. George didn't survive. She's doing a swan dive! Holy hell! Tens all across the board! Nah, dude. I love this game. It really makes you like imagine what's happening on like every scene from every dialogue you hear. Dude, they could there's an it's an open-ended ending. They could do a lot with this. This game was fucking amazing. The build up, the bond you build with these characters, you trying to figure out what the hell was going on, you trying to use your, your best deduction LA Noir skills, fucking amazing. Every character had an important role. There was no such thing as a side character in this game. Outstanding, dog. What a game, man. I, lo I, I love games. I love things that just make you think. Jesus Christ. Amazing. Truly amazing. Like the video. Subscribe, share, comment what was your favorite part. Comment when I was being a dumbass. Comment when I was being woke as hell. Comment when chat was being annoying. Comment what was your favorite part. Comment when you were like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? Holy hell. She's my C, but she threw it. Oh, you had a saucy. Did you stew it? Wonder what it cost me. I threw some shoes in. Ice me on my body. I'm never proven.